drive our 12th annual food drive. Unmute. I am muted. I, I'm not muted. Live TV. I am unmuted. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Let's try that again. Ian Locke here in the ONTV studios. It is noon live here at ONTV for the second day of the ONTV food drive, our 12th annual food drive for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. So we are here today on day two. What are we going to do today? We, every day this week we've been playing different types of programming, specials, and that sort of thing of different topics. And today, see the jersey? Dragon Sports, Lake Orion. It is sports day. So we're going to be talking about high school sports, college sports, and a bunch of other things. So we have uh, Joey and Sammy in the studio here. We're going to... Once we do all of our business, we're going to get together. We're going to chit chat about sports. Um, see, they're already waiting for me. I got to fly out to SoFi Stadium. Uh, you know, after we get uh, some business done, and we're going to have a tailgate. I don't know why Joey brought a basketball. What's that all about? But we're going to go talk football and all that kind of stuff with Joey and Sammy and have a good time. Uh, yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to have a little tailgate over at SoFi. Talk about the Super Bowl. Am I allowed to say the Super Bowl? Sure. Can I say that word? The big game on Sunday. We're going to talk about that. But first off, why are we here? We're here to support the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. And uh, for the last week and a half or two weeks, we've been collecting uh, donations from sponsors around uh, our area and partners with ONTV. And uh, without our sponsors, we could never uh, attain the collection goals we have so far. You can see on the screen in the, the lower corner there that our collection uh, so far is at $5,115, and we had an amazing morning on Monday with Matt Feitfer from, uh, came into the studio and sat with us for about a half hour, and he was able to drop off two surprise $500 checks uh, yesterday to really boost our totals to where they are currently. Um, we were saying our collection goal is $5,000, which, Hello, we hit it uh, for fish, but we are going to say we are going to amend that. We're going to push it to whatever the community is willing to give, and every penny helps the food pantry. Uh, we had an interview with uh, 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 the director, Michelle, over at Fish, and she's talking about uh, these time of days, this uh, with inflation and these things going on, and some shortages of the food in in the uh, re or not restaurants, but in the uh, grocery stores that we're finding all of us just when we go shopping that. Some items are scarce. Prices are going up. So having the funds that we are collecting uh, through this food drive and fund drive um, are really helpful this time of year. Uh, fish, uh, after the holidays, some of their cupboards are bare and their funds are running low. So we want to make sure that uh, we help at least replenish, the, uh, restock those shelves, replenish the coffers, and try to get some uh, of these funds in their hands so they can help all of the uh, their clients that are in a food emergency. So how can you donate to the food drive? We have some graphics we can show you. Uh, donate online, visit uh, orionontv.org and click the food drive logo to donate through GoFundMe. Again, uh, this year we're doing a GoFundMe account and as many of you know, when you use GoFundMe, uh, a little fee is removed, uh, you know, when you do those online transactions. So if uh, you don't want to pay the fee, you can come into the studio. You can donate in person so you can bring non-perishable food items as well to help us fill our van, uh, uh, which is outside in the parking lot here at the Orion Center at 1349 Joslin Road in Lake Orion. There it is on the screen, the big white van. You can't miss it. The door is open. We got a couple donations uh, yesterday uh, placed in the van. Or you can just come into the studio. We're here uh, until 9 p.m., uh, Monday through Thursday, and you can drop off those donations, those physical donations. And I think we had about six donations, six bags of food come in um, yesterday, which was great to see. So we're always looking for those donations, and we want to call attention to uh, that Lake Orion High School students are also collecting on our behalf. And uh, the broadcasting class over there under the direction of Roger Smith and his crew are, we're gonna actually going to see them today. So we're going to go to their newscast. Every day, Lake Orion High School has a newscast at about 12.55-ish. It is live streamed, and we have a fiber link between here and Lake Orion High School, and we're going to see their newscast live as it happens at Lake Orion High School with the talented students over at the Dragon Broadcasting Program. So uh, that's about 12.55. In the meantime, we're going to take care of business, still talk about fish, 
Uh, why do you need to donate? What are some of the needs that fish has? It changes over the, uh, over the seasons and in the winter months they, they need different things than they would need in the summertime. So some of the, uh, the wish uh, list, if you will, for fish is on your screen now. Uh, a lot of the time, this time of year, what do you usually eat? I, I, we, I just had chili last night. You know, it's nice and hearty and warm and it's comfort food. Uh, keeps you toasty when it's really chilly outside. So uh, canned uh, pineapples, canned mandarin oranges, chilies, beef, stews, canned meats, that sort of thing. Something hearty, something to stick to your ribs is always a good thing. And also uh, meal prep items like hamburger helper and the like. Uh, how can you zip up some ground beef to, to make a hearty meal for your family? So hamburger helpers always welcome. And believe it or not, ketchup and mustard. Uh, condiments like that are always in need. And some items we don't have on there just uh, you know directly. Those are what they had on their main website at OxfordOrianFish.org. If you want to go visit over there and check them out directly. But uh, soaps, laundry detergents, um, toothpaste, toothbrushes, uh, and school supplies. They, they take all those types of donations to help their clients. Yeah, so here we are. Goal was $5,000 to co uh, collect. Uh, we got that in a week and a half, and a, but all, we went over the edge in a day, which is crazy. We're so happy for that. We are at $5,115, and we can't thank Matt Pfeiffer from Northern Wholesale Flooring, uh, Sagebrush, uh, in Sagebrush Cantina, and some of our other sponsors. Let's talk about some of our sponsors. Uh, J Joe's our director today. This is live TV. Um, let's uh, take a peek at uh, some of our sponsors today just to say thank you. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2022 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Canterbury Village, located at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. They're a first time sponsor to the Food Drive and donated $1,000. You can find more information about Canterbury Village by visiting their website, canterburyvillage.com, or give them a call at 248-931-1900. Meyer of Auburn Hills, located at 800 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. They are a returning sponsor for the food drive, donating $900 toward our goal. For more information about Meyer, Give them a call at 248-393-5100 or visit Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 99011 Main Street in Royal Oak. They're a longtime sponsor for the food drive. This year they donated $500 to the drive. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Corporate Benefit Solutions, located at 5750 New King Drive, Suite 310 in Troy. This is Corporate Benefit Solutions, second year with the food drive, donating $100. For more information, visit their website, corporatebenefitsolutions.net, or give them a call at 248-290-0250, extension 16. Waste Management, with locations in Lake Orion and Pontiac. This is Waste Management's first year helping with the food drive and have donated $200 toward our goal. For more information about Waste Management, visit their website, wm.com. And Shirley's Wig Shop, an online shop that can be found at shirleyswigshop.com. They're a first time participant in the food drive and are a two day sponsor. For more information about Shirley's Wig Shop, visit their website or give them a call at 586 237-7977. We want to share a video with you about Old World Canterbury Village, making their food drive debut this year. Their generous $1,000 donation to fish will truly make a difference. Well, the history, my father bought uh, the property in 1991. Uh, it took him about two years to restore the property and, and open it up. 
basically is a Christmas village and a giant Christmas store, which was the anchor of the business um, for a long, long time. Uh, fast forward to 2020, I bought the property for my mom and dad, me and my wife, Angie. And in the last 15 months, we've kind of had the, quite the whirlwind of change uh, with Canterbury. We are no longer in the retail business, meaning the Christmas. Uh, I've leased out every square foot of this place to great uh, local vendors, Yates, Wooden Tulip, Scott's Farm, you name it. We have some really, really great small vendors here. And then uh, we've, we've gotten known for our family events uh, that we, uh, we do with our programming. Uh, dinosaurs, Halloween, holiday, food truck rallies, things of that nature. And our calendar for 2022 is by far our biggest ever and it's gonna be a crazy summer here. Uh, just go to our Facebook site. I mean, we got everything on there. Uh, our, our social media team does a great job of keeping people up to speed on what Canterbury is doing. So just go to Facebook, Canterbury Village, and then obviously you can go to canterburyvillage.com on the web, but that'll take you to Facebook as well. I, I own Dino Stroll, um, and uh, we've, we've been around the country. Last June was our first uh, uh, first road show in Philadelphia, and so we've been at it for about seven months now. And last weekend we were in St. Louis. This weekend we're in Chantilly, and uh, been all over the country. And it's been a whirlwind. So I never thought I'd be in the uh, dinosaur carnival business, but I am. And uh, I've had a lot of fun and me and my wife have had a great uh, 15 months and our charity and giving has been awesome and we're, we're very lucky and very happy. Well, we have three big charities right now. Uh, Jay Towers with Jay Juniors in 15 months, we raised over a little over $70,000 for his uh, charity, which is helping sick kids. He takes them to Disneyland every year. And then uh, <clears throat> we've teamed up with Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and the bottomless toy chest. Uh, we've raised in the last two Christmases thousands and thousands of toys. Uh, this year we decided to go a little above and beyond and we donated $5,000 to uh, the bottomless toy chest. They do a wonderful job with kid pediatrics uh, for 12 months of the year. And then uh, this year, uh, this summer, this past summer, we opened up our own food pantry on our campus along with Woodside Bible Church. We call it the food, Village Food Pantry. And uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's been very fun. Uh, I'm super uh, proud of the, the, the charity aspects we've given. And uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to uh, announce our fourth charity partner. And then obviously, um, Matt Pfeiffer gave me a nice phone call uh, about a week or so, so ago. Um, I, I can't tip my cap to Matt enough what he does for our community and if we had another 25, 30 Matt Pfeiffers in, in Lake Orion it would be awesome. And uh, he asked me, or Canterbury Village, for a nice donation for the uh, <clears throat> Your Food Drive going on. And of course I'm always willing to uh, donate and help out and uh, you know just because I have my own food pantry doesn't need other ones don't need help as well. So Canterbury donated a thousand dollars to uh, to the food drive and, and your, um, your uh, program in the next couple of weeks there. But if everybody pitched in, that's well to do, like you just said in our community and, and a lot of people have, you know, hopefully Oxford Orion Fish, uh, Village Food Pantry, hopefully we can help uh, bring that to attention and really stop a hunger in our own little community of Oxford and Orion and hopefully continue it, you know, through Oakland County and then Metro Detroit. And you know what, we live in America, nobody should go hungry. I mean, our number one goal in America, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, no matter what you believe in, nobody should be hungry. Two, one. All right, back here at the ONTV Studios live. Uh, Great sponsors, uh, amazing donation from Canterbury Village. That $1,000 donation is the single largest donation we've ever had for the food drive. So we thank them for joining the food drive. This is their first outing and first donation to the food drive and to the fish food pantry. So yeah, it's amazing. Um, all those sponsors, what they do, without them, we wouldn't be where we are. Um, we've had uh, a handful of private uh, uh, donations from residents, which is fantastic. Uh, mostly in the $100 range, which is wonderful. And we even had a, uh, a middle schooler pop in and drop off $40 of his own money to help with the food drive, which is fantastic. 
Um, he wanted to remain anonymous, which is okay with us, but uh, we want to thank him just the same. And uh, his donation means as much to us as all of the large corporation, corporate donations, of course. Um, one other uh, sponsor we'd like to uh, give attention to uh, is Waste Management. Uh, they, they came on board, and unfortunately, we couldn't get a video uh, up for them. Uh, produced in time for our live segments here, but we do have a slide we can put up for waste management, and I do have a statement from the company uh, that they they wanted us to read, and why not? They're a two-day sponsor, and that's what we do here. We're going to give them attention about what they do. So waste management. Um, Joe, if we have a graphic, I don't know if we have one. Technical difficulties. Oh, technical difficulties, live TV. Okay, well, I'll just read the statement. We have waste management is North America's leading provider of integrated environmental solutions. We partner with our customers and communities to manage and reduce waste from collection to disposal while recovering valuable resources and creating clean, renewable uh, energy. We are on a quest for environmental performance, a mission to maximize resource value while minimizing and even eliminating environmental impact so that both our economy and our environment can thrive. So Waste Management, a two-day sponsor with a $200 donation to the food drive. That, I believe that's their first uh, donation to the food drive, so we welcome aboard as a partner um, to the ONTV food drive, this being our 12th annual. So, yeah, it's great to have all these sponsors. Again, we are currently sitting, I think, at 5125 in our cash collections, and the food donations are coming in. So if you'd like to stop over at the ONTV studios at the Orion Center, we're at 1349 Joslin Road in Lake Orion, and you can just walk right in the, uh, the studio offices, drop off your food. And uh, we also have our truck out back, uh, out front, I should say, with some big orange cones. You can't miss it. It's a big thing. Our logo's all over it. Go ahead. If you don't want to pop in, you can just drop them off right into the truck. Uh, if you'd like to donate uh, via GoFundMe, head on over to our website at orionontv.org. And right there, you can click on the food drive uh, link, and it'll take you right to the GoFundMe account. And you can donate as much as you like. Yeah. So it's going well. This Again, this is Tuesday, Sports Day. Uh, what do we have on tap for today? We're gonna, we have uh, guests in the studio, Joey Tysick, my director from yesterday, staff member here at ONTV, but also a lover of uh, sports and all that good stuff. Sammy Taramina from OA Now, uh, the podcast. Uh, he's, they're in, uh, at SoFi Stadium just waiting to go. They're, they're ready to throw down and argue sports. We always have a good time uh, debating and discussing, discussing sports. And due to the big game coming up on Sunday, we decided to fly uh, all of us out to uh, SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. So I'll, I'll, I'll have to take the, I guess, the teleportation device to get me there in two seconds. But we'll be out there and we're going to talk sports uh, for most of uh, this uh, programming segments. Um, but we're also going to pop over to Lake Orion High School and check in uh, on the daily newscast from uh, Lake Orion High School broadcasting students at LOHS. That'll be about 12.55 or so. All right, so uh, yesterday we were fortunate enough to talk to uh, the director of FISH, Michelle. She is fabulous, and uh, we recorded that uh, interview. We'd like to play it back for you now. She came in via Zoom, and so we had a nice chat about FISH, its needs, and all that good stuff. So here's that interview we had uh, just on Monday afternoon with Michelle. Tell us about FISH. Tell us uh, all the new things happening at your organization. Right now, we're extremely busy given the food prices and, you know, the economy. And it, this is such a benefit, this, this telethon more so than any other year, just given the food prices. And we weren't able to have some of the other food drives that we've had in the past due to COVID. So you doing this is such a blessing and really we'll hear from people two, three months down the road that, you know, they saw this on, on TV. So this is really the telethon that continues to give throughout the year. So I can't thank you enough. We were, uh, I, I think when Joe came out uh, to visit with you and we put some updated videos together about the organization and see how you guys are doing, checking up on you. And he mentioned that, that, uh, this isn't a one day or a five day thing that it kind of lingers because we do advertise, as you know, um, we put it everywhere we possibly can. They're in magazines and everybody's homes and the Lake Orion Living magazine and all that sort of thing. So it's good to hear that feedback that, you know, uh, there's still some ripples going on um, after the fact. So today we're actually doing very well. We just had two $500 donations uh, this morning. 
So that's another wow. $1,000 for the organization. And our goal, of course, is 5000 I think we're just going to destroy that number. <laughs> <laughs> the corporate sponsors this year have been just outrageous. Can you uh, share with us uh, any other organizations that you work with that you would like to uh, uh, shine a light on? Um, definitely Love, Inc. They do a lot, and I think sometimes they don't get the credit, and I know that sometimes they feel a little left out, but sometimes maybe our organization gets a little bit more than they do. So they're something that our clients are also, when they're clients of FISH, they can also be a client of Love, Inc. And Love, Inc. will help, you know, any, any, tor any sort of other issues that they might need if it's, you know, with housing and whatnot. And the other partner that we've really been doing a lot with has been St. Vincent de Paul because there's been a you know, big issue right now is housing and everything is kind of coming apart all at once. And they are really able to help with you know, some of needs if there's you know, utility bills. It's, so the, it's the cost right now to heat their, their, um, their homes and for fuel, there's just, the needs are just endless. And right now we're hearing that I'll have clients that will call that will just be like you know, single moms, they were working, they didn't make enough in tips so that there's immediate food. And that's something that I will say hasn't happened in a while, but I'm getting a lot of those phone calls. I get those emails that I need food right now. Yeah. And, you know, because nobody wants to ask for help. So that's something that I think it's been such a benefit with the food drive and the generosity of this community that, as you know, Joe saw, our, our pantry is stocked and we are able to meet those needs immediately. And it's really been because of the generosity of this community. I, I can't thank them enough all through COVID the donations just kept coming. It, you know, it was just unbelievable. I would just sit here and tear. Okay. Yeah, when we talked about a week or so ago, you, you really gave a lot of credit to Gleaners for helping you get through the past year oh. or so, right? Yes. And that's really, and I mean, Meyer is a wonderful partner. We can't thank them enough, but they could, you know, if you walked into Meyer, there was no food on the shelves. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Glean, if it wasn't for Gleaners, we would not have been able to meet the needs of this community. And those, and through Gleaners, that's where like this, the food pantry, we will be, be able to get our money because of this food drive. That all the food drive money, you know, we do have to pay for Gleaners. It's definitely a better price, but we do have to pay for that. And those are the dollars from this telethon is what we're able to purchase with Gleaners. And that's how we're able to definitely meet the needs because even now there's food shortages that we, we can't get certain items in for our clients. Now, you mentioned, too, um, or we were talking just before you came on the air about, uh, you know, this streamlined process. If, you, if you're in a food emergency, what do people need to do? Uh, you said, we can help and, you now. So explain that. And that's something that, you know, years ago, there was, um, they would have to sit down with a client review, bring in a lot of paperwork, a lot of documents, and it was a little cumbersome. And that's something, thank you so much for highlighting that, because really right now, just given the entire situation, we do, um, it's very brief on the phone. It's a real simple client review. We just need, you know, basic information, you know, the amount of the children, you know, are in the household. And if they actually, as long as they can prove that they live in our area, you know, Oxford, Lake Orion, Leonard, certain parts of Oakland, because we have, you know, our parameters that we don't want to, you know, infringe on another pantry. But really, as long as they're in the area and they have a need, they just need to call. And we will get them in as soon as we possibly can. And we have the number up on the screen, 248-628-3933. Yes. And, of course, your website, OxfordOrianFish.org. And your needs always change, right? We, it's, it's something that people really don't understand. It's like seasonally different things uh, the, uh, people are looking for or needing. And one of the, the items that I think could get overlooked is school supplies. Uh, yeah. You guys collect school supplies. And... You know, there's blessings in a backpack, which we know about, but uh, you also take school supplies. And what was the other items? Uh, household items, yeah, yeah. toiletries, things Shampoo, like that. Shampoo, toothpaste, you know, the yeah. regular stuff that um, if... And, and that's, yeah. that's something from the food drive that those are dollars that we will use to purchase, you know, because we have to have, you know, toilet paper. They need paper towel. They need cleaning products. They need, you know, shampoo, toothpaste, soap razors so we really do try to kind of meet all of those needs that so it's basically you know like a little grocery store if you walked into Meyer, it's really the same thing 
So that's what we really try to, because then even a lot of them have bridge cards. But with a bridge card, you can't buy toilet paper. You can't buy feminine products. Yeah. So it's basic needs that, you know, you don't necessarily think about that they have to have. And they're so ex everything is just so expensive right now. Well, you guys do a fantastic job there at FISH and uh, the partnership between FISH and ONTV in its 12th year. And it's not going any way anytime <laughs> soon. But it's, no. it's, uh, it's a great partnership and uh, your support of us and our support of you and the mission that you guys have is, is one that the whole staff and the whole organization from our board of directors to our cable commission um, who make sure that we operate. We're all on board with your mission and, and this food drive. So uh, we thank no, you, you for your... Such, yeah, go ahead. You, yeah, you are such a gift, really, because we are 100% donations, 100% volunteers, and we really, truly try to meet the needs of the community, and we can't do it without the community support. And you giving us this opportunity this week for this... Um, this telethon is just, like I told you, it's, I can't thank you enough because it's literally a gift that will just continue throughout the entire year. And there's, we don't have anything else like it. Well, we like to be unique. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, and we appreciate uh, you allowing us to help you. Um, it's, it's, it's great. And um, again, live with us here, the president of Fish Michelle, and uh, we want to thank you so much for taking time to uh, Zooming in. And I'm glad oh, the technology worked. <laughs> we were, we've had a lot of little hiccups today. <laughs> but thank oh, you so I, much for taking the time. Yeah. And any uh, uh, last uh, little thank yous you'd like to give before we go? Honestly, it, was just, it would just be a thank you to you, your organization, to Tracy, to Joe. Like, I can't thank you all enough. And really to all of, all of the, you know, the community, the, the generosity. It's, I can't say it enough, and I know I sound like a broken record, but it, it's just absolutely amazing. This is such a unique community and that everybody just sim seems to come together. And that's why I always refer to the pantry as my second home. And every person that comes in there is a guest in my home. And we want everybody to be treated that way. And we're able to do that because of you. So thank you. You are more than welcome and are you know, it makes me smile. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some food thank here you, you need you. to come get yeah. at some point. <laughs> We've, we're getting some actual physical donations today, which is great to see. Almost back to normal, Wonderful. like we said. So, but yes, oh. um, we want to thank uh, you for taking the time to uh, zoom in. And uh, oh. we'll be in touch. And by the end of the week, um, we will be sharing some very good news with you and the organization. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. You too. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. And again, fish what they do, right, in our community. Just yeah. very active, um, helping those in need. One, I mean, two, what else can you say? All right, great interview with Michelle, the uh, the president of the board of directors over at Oxford Orient Fish. Great organization, great volunteers at Fish. And you might not know this, but uh, the whole organization is run by volunteers. Uh, and if you'd like to volunteer at Fish, head on over to their website at oxfordorientfish.org. They have information about how you can help, different things they need, and if you're in a food emergency, we can't forget this, if everything's working okay, we can bring the slide up. We do a, a food emergency slide. Give them a call at 248-628-3933. And they, uh, as you heard in the interview, they have streamlined, streamlined their uh, uh, assistance policies and practices to make it easier to get help. And if you, you can get help immediately if you are in a food emergency. Again, the number is 248-628-3933. Okay, it's time to talk sports. We're here in the studio. Well, actually, we're on the road. No, we're not. We're on the road. We I, upped I, our budget a little bit. I, I took the Concorde, got it out of mothballs, and flew it across uh, to Cali. And here we are in uh, Inglewood and at, at SoFi Stadium. We're going to have a little tailgate here. We got our uh, beverages. Anybody want a beverage? Sam. Sammy's going to wave off a beverage. Come on. No. Come just on. for no. fun. Now, we're not pressuring him to have a beverage. It is just a Pepsi. It's not like our cameraman Jim over here going, hey, is that Bud Light? No. <laughs> it's not Bud Light. But, yeah, we got our cooler here. We've got our munchies. We got some uh, stuff to eat and some goodies just like a good tailgate should have. But today, we're going to talk sports. Uh, Sammy Taramina joins us in the studio today, uh, host of 
10 shows on ON TV. <laughs> three of them. Three of them. BT, Last Three Brain Cells, and then OA Now. OAA Now being the one that is the most active in your uh, right repertoire. Right now, BT is going to make a comeback pretty soon. Ooh, all right. And then um, Last Three Brain Cells make a comeback on that in a couple weeks. And BT is between Terraminas, and that show has been running on ON TV since, oh, 2011. No, since 2011. So you've been here 11 years working with us. Yep. Sammy, mm -hmm. maybe we should give you a desk. You should. <laughs> you should. And then, and then I write blogs for you. And he writes blogs for us. So at our website, we have uh, a news blog. And Sammy uh, updates everybody on what's happened around the OAA, mm -hmm. uh, high school sports, and all that good stuff, because he is the local expert. And we have Joey Tysak here, production coordinator here at ONTV, but also host of... Views from the sidelines. Unfortunately, my uh, broadcast partner, Malik, got scared. Oh, he couldn't make it. Uh, so now I'm basically between OAA now. Yeah, he is between uh, OAA now. But yeah, so I will I will try to defend Malik a little bit, but uh, I won't give him too much slack for missing out. But uh, yeah, okay, I'm ready to debate. Yep. So uh, I got my uh, dragon jersey on. This is uh, from the pink out game mm -hmm. uh, against Clarkston a uh, couple several years ago. I think it was. 2017. Yeah, I remember I that game real well, and I did. We did talk about the Lake Orion <laughs> record during the pink games. Yeah, it wasn't very good. No, no. But the but the idea is fabulous, right? I mean, it's a, it's to recognize uh, cancer survivors or victims mm -hmm. of cancer. And I stuff. know Clarkson does it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, I know they. I know they also did it. I know back in 2019 um, when Lake Orion played Clarkston. I mean, Lake Orion wore pink, Clarkson yep. wore purple, yeah. and we know how that turned out. Yeah, it was ugly. Yeah, yeah it, it was. It was uh, the purple wasn't from the jerseys. It was no. the black and blue. <laughs> it was the bruises. No. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so we're here to talk sports. Um, I think in the first segment we should talk high school maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Sammy sent us along uh, a couple top ten lists. So give us the state of OAA basketball right now, Sam. Well, when you look at basketball this year, obviously, you know, the OAA in boys basketball, um, there are four divisions. In girls basketball, there are three divisions. So... On the, on, the, on the boys' side right now, when you look at the red right now, Ferndale leads the division. Um, then it's followed by North, uh, Oak Park. Oak Park, yeah. Um, North Farmington. Adams. Then Clarkston. And then, which, um, is which is mind-boggling, especially, especially the success they've had as a program. Um, but really struggling in league. I mean, I saw them play against Adams, and they when they um, – Lost that one by two, by on a buzzer beater by on Peter Caracas. Yeah, um, that was shocking. You know to see them lose at Clarkson. It's been really rare for them to, to lose at on their home field. I, um, I and I, then you have Farmington and then West Bloomfield okay. right now wrap up. Uh, no, West Bloomfield Farms to wrap up the two in the um, red division. In the red division. So do we want to dig into this a little we bit? Want to dig into it? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, Clarkston sitting at fifth. In the red, yep. In the red, mm -hmm. never happens. It's red. I, I mean, I we talked about it on the podcast yesterday, mm -hmm. trying to figure out the last time Clarkston was looking up um, in the red. Last year, well, let's not there, forget Ferndale's a Division Two state championship contender. Yes. Last year they went to the Final Four yes. in Division Two. They ran into a very good Grand Rapids Catholic Central yeah. team. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to deal with them again this year. So. When you look at Ferndale, what Coach Juan Rickman's done, obviously having two All-State players and Trey Lewis and um and um Justin Drake, obviously, yeah. I mean like that that matters a lot, you know, when you have star players there. Yeah. I mean, and then when you look at a team like, and then when you go into Division One, you look at in, in the red. Oak Park's had a really nice year. Duran mm -hmm. Shepard's done a really nice job there. Um, Adams, obviously, with the experience they got back, I mean. You look at Gunnar Walters coming back in the state. Um, you look at um, Justice Mims, who's had a really nice year. Um, Jared Thomas has done a really nice job with that Adams team. And then, of course, North Farmington. We all know what Todd Negotian does over there yeah. um, with the famous trap defense. Um, they do have a Boy, transfer. They, they drive you crazy if you're not – I mean, you play basketball, Joey. You yeah. know, you're, if you can't – if you, you can't, have no way out of a trap – Mm -hmm. yeah. A long night. Yes, it will be. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you look at the red and then seeing Clarkson fifth, I mean, that's really, really shocking. Especially, yeah. you know, even with Dan five teams there. You know, when he was there, then I know Tim Wasilik's done a really nice job. I mean, yes. Keegan Wasilik is there. Zach Austin, Nathan Steinman. Um, they got the players play are there. Yeah, the players are there. Yeah. It's just you know, I think the league is starting to catch up to Clarkson. 
I was going to say, they have a lot of returning guys from the team last year, and they, mm -hmm. they didn't struggle like this last year. So, yeah, I, I would the agree league is that better this year. Yeah, yeah. The, the league, league is, is starting better. to catch up. Yeah, the league is starting to catch up. Um, and then let's go to the white division, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, it's a three-team race right now in the league between Lake Orion, um, Groves, and um, and Bloomfield Hills. Of course, Lake Orion went into Bloomfield Hills and knocked off the Blackhawks by 14 on the road. Yeah. Um, they got Groves on Thursday. That's a huge game right there um, over in Beverly Hills. Um, and then you look at Groves, obviously, they got a very good team. Um, they just lost to Clarkson the other night. Um, really good game, 52-46. Mm. Um, obviously, and then you look at Troy. Troy's a very scrappy team, well-coached team. They're Gary Frelick. And then you have um, Stony Creek is having a really down year. Last year, Stony Creek went into the regional final. They had a really good player. Um, last season, um, you know, but they're replacing a ton of talent. So yeah. when you look at right now the state of the white right now, um, Lake Orion right now looks to be the cream of the crop. Um, obviously, when you look at the players, they got Alden Ritt, Malachi Granberry, DJ Morrow. And let's not forget, this team made a coaching change. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we're bring that up. I mean, mm -hmm. we were sh mm -hmm. stunned mm -hmm. when it was made. First, we were stunned at how they got out of the gate. Mm -hmm. when they started the season one and three yes yeah. and you're like what's happening because that was not on the yeah that was not on the menu well and they had that bad loss of troy athens earlier right. in the year that was that was you know that was not very good to start off and then made the coaching change and they I mean, went what's the record after the coach ever since, change ever since coach jose andradas took over they are a um they're eight and eight and one with um andradas um Coaching that team, yeah. but nine and one overall because he had to coach the first game against the yes. Northwest because of the um, so it's, because it, of the um, it really was, is amazing to see. I mean, you've seen we've seen coaching changes happen midseason a lot. Right. I mean, this isn't like a first time thing, yeah, right. And to see a team like that just immediately respond, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's wow. all it takes, especially for a game like basketball because people always talk about how you know quickly the game will shift where people will go on runs yeah sometimes just inserting a new coach and a new offense and some new styles it just gives a breath of fresh air and allows the players to kind of just feel more free yeah and uh sometimes mm -hmm. that just happens and then the other teams you're looking at groves obviously they got aaron yeah. debose nick lertz um quentin Steele, the two bigs in the interior um aaron, i mean aaron debose has been really good yeah. at, at the point guard spot for groves um you know, when I look at Groves, they play. They, they're not a bad team under Coach Benny White. I mean, like when you look at them, Blue Bay Hills. A lot of people looked at them as the early favorite coming into the, into mm. the um, division with who they had with Noah Adamchich. They had um, Carson Brodsky, um, Ben Canty, um, Derek Lee. I mean, like I mean, Coach Phil Kirchner's got a really nice team, but I've got concerns with their, with their bench. Um, but Blue Bay Hills, I mean, like they're a team that could be really dangerous going forward. Yeah. Um, Troy, we know, is a team that's very scrappy. Um, they got some really good players like Chase. Like, um, they got Darius Whiteside there. They got, um, you know, John Whiteside. Um, they got others as well. I mean, they're very scrappy. Yeah. Stony Creek's having a really down year, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah. that's something to really watch. And, and, and we're coming the to the, the point in the season where mm -hmm. if you're going to do anything, you better start doing it now because, mm -hmm. what, uh, end of the month? Uh, mm -hmm. A couple games in couple games in, in March, yeah. but then you have the NPR coming up pretty soon as your well. Your favorite, <laughs> um, and then you look at a division like the Blue. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Of course, Berkeley. Well, let's cruise Le through the Blue so we can get to the top yeah. ten. The Blue, and then we have the Gold, and then you look at the Blue. About the Gold. Always forget about the Gold. Yeah, the Gold's an absolute mess. It I is. Mean, like, it um, is. And then, but disaster. when you look at the Blue, I mean, obviously you got Berkeley, Oxford, Rochester are the three teams to watch. Obviously. Um, Oxford, we know they've been what they've been through mm -hmm. with the tragedy. We yeah. know what they've been through. They've had some really nice wins. I mean, they upset Rochester at their place, um, but then they had that rough loss to, to um, Berkeley on their home um, floor on Friday night. But they were back. They were back on their right? home court. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, when you look at the divisional race right now, Berkeley right now looks to be a team in front right now, followed by Oxford and Rochester. Rochester's completely fallen off since the um, <laughs> Tamir Rukovic three-point buzzer beater. Um, and then you look at um, Troy Athens, um, Seaholm. Seaholm, I, I still can't figure them out how they beat Troy. Actually, uh, Athens is a team I can't figure out. Um, followed by um, Seaholm and then Southfield, Arts and Tech. I mean, like that's – Yeah. So when you really look at it right now, I think that blue division's three teams. Mm -hmm. And then in the gold division, this is where it's messy. <laughs> I mean – 
I showed you a standings uh, in that division, and you got Roy all five teams. You got Royal Oak, Ferndale University, um, Harper Woods, Royal Oak, and Avondale. And who wants it? Who wants that division? Nobody. When I look at the, when I look at a team that's most <laughs> Who's complete, take it? Nobody when wants I look it. at a team that's most complete in that division, I'm gonna be flat on Aussie. I think it's Royal Oak. I mean, Royal Oak. They got Jesse Hollington there. You got Dylan Hop. They got you got Hoffman there. I mean, like you look at Royal Oak. To me, they're the most completed team in there. Yeah. Um, Ferndale University is another team to watch, and then of course, um, Harper Woods. I thought they would be. Uh, a little more, a little dominant. more batter. I thought they would dominate yeah, yeah. this division. And, and for those who don't know, Harper, this is their first yeah. year of competing yes. in the OAA. Mm -hmm. So they were, what were they? The they really struggled last Maine year in the Michigan, Me Michigan, Michigan Mega, Con Mich Michigan Metro Conference. Yeah, they really struggled there last year. Um, they have a new coach in them, and a Tawan Porter. Um, they have not been very good. I, I just think <laughs> I've been really disappointed. Little surprise. I've been really, really disappointed with Harper Woods. Um, Avondale, we know, is very scrappy. Um, you know, I really like what Coach, um, what they've done over there. Yeah. Um, but to me, my biggest disappointment has been Harper Woods. I mm. mean, obviously, with the expectations. So, if you were going in, to take a stab at it, a guess, who wants it? Who you wins it's Royal the Oak? You think it's Royal Oak? I think it's Royal Oak because when you look at the Ravens, I mean, like, I think Coach Aaron Smith, he's got the, and then I forgot to mention Pontiac. Pontiac, you know what I mean? Davion Hall. Let's yeah, not forget. Yeah. He's had some crazy games. Football, ba football stand-up, basketball stand-up. Unbelievable you know? athlete. I mean, like. He's really good. But when I look at teams right now, I would trust Royal Oak right now. Kay. I would really trust the Ravens right now with mm. the way that they're So playing. you think if Royal Oak's going to have a chance at it, mm -hmm. the next two weeks? Next two weeks will decide Royal Oak season. I, I just think, you know, when you look at the Ravens, I mean, like, yeah. I think they got a good chance to do some damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. so All right, so my top ten. The boys. so with that, uh, we do have a top ten graphic for the boys in the OAA. Mm -hmm. uh, if our uh, computers, if our switchers <laughs> working, uh, more gremlins on board here. Um, I think I had a DDR two uh, for our director throw mm -hmm. it in there today. Um, obviously, you could probably do it off the top of your head. Ferndale, obviously, my top team. Kind of running into um, some, uh, You know, all we got five teams in the red that are ranked. Um, I got Clarkson my number five. Um, I got. Um, Adams right now, my number four. Um, North Farnsworth, my number three. Yeah. Oak Park, my number two. Lake Orion at six right mm -hmm. now. Okay. Um, I have Bloomfield Hill, seven. Um, Groves, eight. Um, Berkeley, nine. And a, um, and ten, I got Oxford. I mean, when you really look at the Wildcats, um, you know, obviously. You think, really? I think with Oxford, you know, they got pieces. Bryce Esman. You got Mitchell Viviano. You got Alex Brown. I there mean, it is. We got it on the screen. I mean, obviously, with Oxford, um, they're not a bad team. I mean, when they played Berkeley, Berkeley right now is a little bit better right now, especially with the play of Timmy Rekovic, yeah. Jacob Sheriff, uh, Jacob Sharif, and then you look at, um, I mean, Joe Sermo's done a really nice job with that team. So, you know, that's my top ten right now on the boys' side. So, having uh, having talked, uh, you know, we, we hit all of uh, the, the divisions on yep. the guys. Mm -hmm. uh, this is... We're in Lake Orion. We're, yeah, mm -hmm. We are on ON TV. Mm -hmm. And I'm wearing a dragon jersey <laughs> here. Let's talk the state of the dragons. Now, we talked about yeah. them briefly after we, s we rolled through uh, the rest of the league. Mm -hmm. um, we but haven't we, talked girls yet. <laughs> we haven't, but we can. Uh, yes. We have plenty of time. Okay. So, having the, the discussion about dragons basketball, you have them at six. Do you think there's any movement up there? Do they have to watch themselves? If they you're gotta at, be careful if because you're at the if you look at Lake up, Orion, you know, to me, they got a they got a very favorable schedule coming up. They got Gro they're gonna have Groves at home. They're gonna have Bloomfield Hills at home. Um, they're gonna have a non-league game with Holly. Um, the trickiest game on the road are gonna be the games at Groves, and then of course the game at Troy. I mean, Troy is not an easy place to play. Yeah. Neither is Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when you really look at the state of the Dragons right now, um, from varsity wise. Yeah. This team's going to be fine. Um, sub varsity wise, I'm a little concerned. Um, but okay. when you really look at Lake Orion right now, the play of all the Rhett Malachi, Granberry, and DJ Morrow, um, that's been the key. The big three. The big three, that's been the key. I think, I especially think with the, in this eight game winning streak. For, yeah. for me, I think honestly, DJ, DJ Morrow is kind of the, the biggest factor because. 
you see in a lot of teams for basketball these days, you, you can have these, these two-headed monsters. And for some reason nowadays, that's not enough. No. And you need that third guy, and that, that's a problem that a couple teams we'll talk about later in uh, college have. But DJ Morrow has stepped up in a lot of situations, I think, and hit some big shots for this team. Um, so he was I think, huge against Bluefield Hills. Yeah, and so I think he's kind of that key factor outside of Ritt and Granberry. So if he can keep that up, I think Lake Orion has a really good season. And uh, what, do, what do you think their ceiling is? I think their ceiling's pretty high. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at they have a good chance at the white, you know what I mean? They just got to keep winning out, you know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, they control their own destiny right now mm -hmm. in the division. If they knock off Groves, they're in really good shape. Yeah. Um, if um, then you have that district coming up in a couple weeks, obviously you got Adams in there, Rochester's in there. Um, Romeo's been playing better. Mm -hmm. um, Utica Eisenhower, we know, has been down a little bit. Right. Um, and then Stony Creek, we know that they're a, um, they're a gritty team under Coach Team Norgrove. So, right. but looking at that district, it's mm -hmm. not an insurmountable go task, through, man. Yeah, right. insurmountable, but you got to go through Adams. I mean, like Adams is going to mm -hmm. be with what they got back. You got Gunnar Walters, Justice Mims, yeah. um, Brady Priest scoring the post. John Ursay. So more than they're three. Low, they're more. Right. Than, I mean, they're they, more than three. Yeah, they've I been mean, going deep to for a what while. Joey's saying. It's like. You, a lot of teams have two, and we see it on the girls' side too. Mm -hmm. uh, sister tandems doing their thing and mm -hmm. destroying off uh, defenses, but losing because they don't have that third. Mm -hmm. Or right. if you have a fourth, I mean, the luxury of having a fourth yeah. is huge, especially in the it high is, school game. It right. is, especially in this type of game where you got to have at least three or four scores. Yeah. Um, you know, when you look at Groves, has got three scores. You look at Bluefield Hills, they got. Everybody on that team basically a threat to score. Yeah. Um, you know, if you don't have Five scoring, you're not going to win games. Five minutes to LOM. Okay. I, th I don't know if that's picked up on the microphones, but y as you know, this is live today. This is day two. We're mm -hmm. talking uh, sports, high school basketball right now. We didn't Got get to four. the girls just yet, uh, but we can go through those uh, pretty quickly. But we're going to be stepping away in about four minutes mm -hmm. uh, to the live telecast of LOAM, the, mm -hmm. the, the daily newscast at Lake Orion High School. Mm -hmm. uh, those talented kids over there doing a great job. And they always work with us on the food drive as well. They're collecting food. Uh, so we're going to highlight them in just about four minutes or so. So uh, what can we get done in about three and a half minutes there, Sammy? Well, are, there, are there any teams that you're like, what the heck happened? You know, well, like they were expected, like Lake Orion, we knew what we're getting, but they stumbled, but Lake then they're Orion back, stumbled, they, they're they back come back to level it, though, yes, right? they're back in the level. Um, but who just fell off the face Harper of the earth? Harper was to me as the one that I'm really just dis been disappointed with, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, a lot of promise with the Pioneers, I thought, you know, going from, but this is life in the OA, but, you know but what you, I mean? But you, you, you predicted it, mm -hmm. though. I mean, we talked about this on the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Saying Harper Woods might find the little growing pains coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's different yeah. up here. It's a diff it's different league it's compared to even the teams that we're saying are struggling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those teams in other leagues mm -hmm. could cause some damage. And I've been really impressed with Ferndale University. I really like what Coach Josh Nick's done. I mean, with this team. I mean, like last season, Ferndale University didn't win a game. And That's they, true. And they have won. I games. forgot about that. I'm glad they you brought that up. They won four games. I mean, that says yeah. a lot. Now, it helps that he's got experience, but for the university, it's been a team I've been really impressed with. Yeah. Um, when I look at surprises, um, Oak Park. I mean, obviously, didn't expect um, Coach um, Duran Shepard's team to be where they're at right now. Didn't expect mm -hmm. them to be um, looking good, looking really good. And they got a good chance in their district. Um, they got to go through UD Jesuit and Detroit Renaissance. Yeah, that's not. So that's not going to be that's a fun. That's not fun. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, like, and then, but to me, um, yeah. But to me, I mean, like, um, Oak Park. Yeah, they're looking good. And then on the on the flip side, Oxford. I mean, like Oxford. You know what I mean? Like I. I expected, you know what I mean, with them. I knew they could end, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't want to talk about that district that they got to go. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, like, good Lord. Having to deal with Grand Blank, Davison, Lapeer. Yeah, Lapeer's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lapeer's been playing good. We know about Grand Blank. Yes. I mean, like, I mean, you're like, in, you're out. Yeah. Grand Blank's been a monster Grand since I graduated. <laughs> 
I used to have to play Grand Blank in, in our districts for Brandon. Two minutes. And uh, that was not fun for most of the time. And they're the defending Division One state champions. That's exactly true. Right. So, yeah. so if, you're, if yeah. you're Coach Steve Laidlaw and, and you look at that district, this is your next. Yeah, that, that's a poke in the eyes. I know. Is. That's going to be rough for <laughs> Oxford. But Clarkson got a really soft district. I mean, even though you could say Water Vermont, you know what I mean? Yeah. Water Vermont's got more, I'm surprised Water Vermont's got more NPR. The dominating Water Vermont, the Corsairs? <laughs> I don't understand Water Vermont. I mean, like, I just can't figure them out. But Clarkson, hey, Clarkson's second to them. What are you doing? Uh, what that, we can get into that, uh, <laughs> you know, when we get back out of the news here from uh, LOHS here, which I think we've got a couple minutes, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> so hold that thought. One we'll minute. do one, one minute. minute. Okay, so we're going to. Toss it over. Uh, we got 60 seconds. We're going to toss it over to LOAM <laughs> High School Newscast today. Don't forget ONTV Food Drive live in the ONTV studio here today at uh, 12 to uh, 2 p.m. every day this week. Uh, sports talk today. Get on OrionOnTV.org and donate to the GoFundMe to help those in need in our community. I think I'll wrap it up there and we will uh, transition on over to LOAM. We'll see you back here after the news. Up on today's LOAM, a look at blended learning, more on the fish food drive, food pantry and drive, and the new municipal building's open house. Stay tuned. Good afternoon, Lake Orion. Today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. I'm Brian Donahue. And I'm Lexi Davis. This is LOAM. Our show is always live streamed on our website and LOHS students watch during the school day. But this week, our audience also includes all of Orion Township. Our newscast is being carried live on Orion Neighborhood Television as part of this week's Fish Food Drive. So we welcome all our new viewers and we hope you'll contribute to the food drive. LOHS students can drop off donations in room D351. Donations are accepted through the end of this week. The Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry has provided food to people around Oakland County for over 46 years. We spoke with president of the food pantry, Michelle Bem, to learn more. We're a food pantry for Oxford, Lake Orion, Leonard, Addison, and parts of Oakland. People have to come, in, they make a phone call, and if they're not a client, they have to become a client, and we just need some basic information, just their name, their phone number, how many children are in the household, and just to verify their address that they live within our boundaries, and then we schedule them for a food appointment. Month of January, we took care of 120 families, which was about 300 individuals, and over 13,000 pounds of food. During the pandemic, we were able to do a wonderful job of maintaining um, all of the food needs for all the clients in the area. Anybody that calls, we've really loosened up even our requirements to, you know, to be a client, just given the situation right now. And there's so many, we'll get phone calls right now from somebody that, you know, I've got, I'm tested positive for COVID, so I can't go to work for the next two weeks and I just need groceries on a short-term basis. So there's been, there's been so many moments that have just really been overwhelming during, given the pandemic and the volume and the generosity of the community. I cannot believe the donations that we have received during this pandemic. If you would like information on how to donate or get in contact with the pantry, you can go to their website at OxfordOrionFish.org. Orion Township completed construction on a new municipal building last November. Township Supervisor Chris Barnett and Township employees hosted an open house last Tuesday where members of the community could come and see the new building. 
Nicole Jadlicki was there for the ribbon cutting. Construction for the new Township Hall started well over a year ago. What started as a vision in Township Supervisor Chris Ronett's head is now a reality. Last November, Township Hall employees said goodbye to their former home and said hello to the new building. Let's start with the final product. The final product, when we initially had input from all the employees uh, uh, and, and consultants and whatnot, is, is accurately depicted in what you're walking through right now. Keep in mind, the construction time frame went through round after round of COVID with labor shortages, with material and logistics, you know, just trying to get stuff in. Our uh, construction manager, Cunningham Lymph, did a fantastic job of pulling that all together and getting us in here, uh, you know, as early as we did. My favorite part about this building is the fact that we actually have an employee cafe space now. In the old building, we didn't have like a lounge break area. So it's great to be able to interact with the other employees in the other departments like we've never been able to do before. For WDBC, I'm Nicole Judlicki. The new township building is on Joslin Road at the Scripps intersection. It's scheduling time at LOHS. Underclassmen are currently making their course selections for next school year. Some classes are listed as blended learning. It gives juniors and seniors the chance to leave the building early or to come in late. Mr. Hawley and Ms. Connor talk about the blended option. So many students and families come to me often and say, Mr. Hawley, what kind of flexibility does Lake Orion High School offer in a student's schedule? And really two things come up quite a bit, and that is online learning, the options for students to take two or more courses at any time in their high school career, but also uh, something that is fairly recent within the last 10 years is our growing program of blended learning courses. For blended learning, first of all, you have to be going to be going into your junior or senior year because in particular, the thing is you have to be able to get to and from the school without using a bus. In the curriculum handbook, if you look at any printed versions, there's places where it's mentioned for blended learning that you'd need to have a parent signature. We've removed that for next year because just the streamline things with the scheduling process for right now, the students would select the class but then when school begins, and if they're sitting in a classroom with a blended teacher, the teacher will have a form that they have to have their parents sign because before they're allowed to be able to start having that advantage of coming and going on differently on days, they're not allowed to until their parents has returned a signature saying that the parent's giving permission for them to leave the building or come up late. For example, a student that uh, were to take a blended learning course in their fourth period in any term, uh, they would have 50% of the classes where they would have to attend school and 50% where they would work remotely from home. So again, that flexibility is really nice for a lot of our students in the junior and senior class. So this is just a reminder that all scheduling materials need to be entered in Zello by tomorrow. Students have through tomorrow to make their course selections in the Zello online system. Applications for classes like Leadership, Yearbook, and the Television Production Workshop are also due tomorrow. Auditions for the Spring Musical, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, begin today, after school in the auditorium. Audition forms and material will be provided upon arrival, or can be picked up throughout the day in the choir room during passing time. Auditions will continue on tomorrow, with, with Thursday hosting an optional callback day. Those interested in participating in the technical aspects of the production are not required to attend auditions, but must visit Mr. Smith in the choir room to receive a physical application. All applications must be filled out and submitted before the end of callbacks on Thursday. Once more, any questions can be directed to Mr. Smith at matthew.smith at lok12.org. Now it's time to head over to Derek Steele with sports. What's going on, Lake Orion? Coming up on today's LL Sports Report, freshman girls basketball and varsity cheer. Stay tuned. The 
the freshman girls basketball team hosted the Fenton Tigers last Tuesday. Emma Watson passes us the recap. The freshman girls basketball team took on Fenton on Tuesday. The girls started the beginning of the game off strong, being able to take the lead on the Tigers. The team continued to keep fighting through the rest of the quarters and eventually took the win. The game ended with Mel Guccione getting 10 points, Mackenzie Tabish and Kylie Kapinski had 7 points each, Dylan Verlinden and Bria Bailey with 6 points, and Addie Verlinden with 2 points. All in all, the girls played a great game, being able to bring the final score to 45-16. to This is what the team had to say about their game. Um, I think we played really good. I think we improved dramatically from our other games that we've played. I think we did really amazing in our defense. We ended up getting a lot of steals, and we ended up putting up a bunch of shots, and I think we did amazing. I think we played really well today as a team. We were passing the ball very productively. Everyone was getting touches. Everyone was getting turns to score. We were playing great on defense. All in all, it was one of our best games we played collectively as a team. I would like to see us, of course, be undefeated, and I'd like to see us get better at getting our post the ball and just teamwork all around. For WDBC, I'm Emma Watson. The freshman girls travel to Clarkston tonight. It starts at 5 p.m. at Clarkston Junior High School. The girls' varsity cheer team participated in a competition this past Saturday. Jonah Zella brings us the details. The Varsity Girls cheer team put up a very tough fight against 12 other teams throughout the course of the competition. Their opponents were strong and they ended up placing third overall, much to their satisfaction. The competition is played with three rounds of cheering. The individual round scores for each team are added up to create a total team score. Our Dragons tallied up a score of 771.82 points combined. Adams took first with a total score of 785.68. And Rochester came in second with a score of 782.14. Well, when it comes to cheer, we have to put in a lot of work because even though it's only like a two minute and 30 second round, like it's hard. And we have to build up our endurance. We have to work out all the time. We run before practice. We try to do a longer warm up. Um, we definitely have to keep our muscles warm the whole entire time, or it's going to be really hard to like stick any of our skills. Um, we uh, are constantly just like running over the cheer, no matter what. Like we have to keep doing those sections, or else like we'll have like little memory things. It's just like all about memory and like muscle memory and when it comes to like JV we definitely try to like come up and support them when we're not on the mat and like when we're off the mat they always are there to support us so we're definitely a team sport. For WDBC I'm Jonah Zeller. Let's go Dragons! That's it for today's LO Sports Report. For WDBC I'm Derek Steele. Your seniors of the day are Quen Williams, Emily Sikta, Devin Parker, Abriana Shinthana, and Ethan Miller. That's all we have for you today. Tune in to Thursday's show for a look at the Ice Golf Challenge and a new edition of Lowdown. Have a tasteful Tuesday, LO.
All right, back here in the ON TV studios, we just uh, finished watching the live daily telecast. I think they go Tuesday, Thursday, Friday of LOAM at Lake Orion High School, the award-winning Hall of Fame, State Hall of Fame broadcast program at Lake Orion High School. And we're back here in the studio with our tailgate. I shouldn't have had that sip just before we went on the air and barbecue chips. So now I'm going to be tasting that for the rest of my life. But anyway, we're here in the studio for the Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry uh, telethon or fundraiser, all that good stuff. Uh, it is our 12th annual food drive for fish. And our collection so far, I can't see anything. I think we are 51 uh, 25. I think that's where we're at. Our goal is $5,000 uh, cash collected, so we're above that goal, which is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. And uh, we have to thank our sponsors for that. Uh, they were fantastic for us. Uh, coming through big, especially Canterbury Village with a donation of $1,000. Uh, Meyer came through huge with a check for $900. And uh, we, we like to say Sagebrush Cantina came through big for mm -hmm. $500. So. Yeah. A lot of new sponsors this year for the food drive, uh, but how can you give to the food drive? Uh, you can do it by online. There's a variety of, way, variety of ways that you can give to the food drive. You can head over to our website at orionontv.org, <laughs> click the food drive logo, and donate through GoFundMe. The GoFundMe account will be active through uh, business hours on Friday evening, I believe. And then we're going to move on to donate in person if you like. If you don't want to donate online, you know there are some fees taken out. Uh, for those uh, uh, credit card donations, you can donate in person right here at the studio at 1349 Joslin Road here at the Orient Center. Uh, business hours for us are 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, bring on those donations. We've had a couple bags of food donated already today. If you have those physical donations, we're trying to fill our production van, the big white van. We have it parked out in the parking lot here at the Orient Center with a door open and ready to go. We had a uh, some nice drop-off uh, donations uh, yesterday to the van. We're hoping to fill it up, and we're actually hoping the uh, Lake Orient High School students uh, with the Dragon Broadcasting Program, they are collecting on our behalf, and we were notified that they have one and a half tubs full of food uh, at the high school that we're going to pick up later this week. So yeah, we're trying to fill our production van and get those uh, donations over to fish. They need those donations more than ever, especially uh, the cash variety. Uh, with the cost of uh, groceries going up, as you know, if you go shopping, we all go shopping, right? We all have to eat and trying to feed our families. Those in need, those who are in a food emergency, uh, find it even more difficult to find uh, food or get food on the table for them and their families. So if you're in a food emergency, you can call FISH at 248, I think we have a graphic, <laughs> or a food emergency, you can call them uh, or visit their website at OxfordOrientFish.org, 248-628-3933. They've streamlined uh, their uh, practices to get you into the system a lot faster. So if you are uh, in an emergency and you need some food for you or your family, you can immediately have access to those resources, 248-628-3933. Okay, sponsors. Let's do our sponsors one uh, another time. We got to get those guys in because without them, we would not be here. We wouldn't be getting our uh, collection goal over five thousand dollars. So here's a little video. A big thank you to the sponsors for Tuesday, uh, February the eighth. All of us at ON TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donation. We are so thankful for their participation this year. Meyer is a five-day sponsor with a $900 donation. Our neighbor just down the road, Old World Canterbury Village, donated $1,000 and is also a five-day sponsor. Corporate Benefit Solutions is back as a one-day sponsor once again this year. M3 Investments donated $500 towards our final goal and is a five-day sponsor. Shirley's Wigs and Waste Management joined this year as two-day sponsors. Thank you again to all of our sponsors. Now we would like to take the time to show you videos featuring two of our sponsors, Corporate Benefit Solutions and Meyer of Auburn Hills. Let's take a look.
services we offer the community are, uh, we do a lot of corporate benefits, health insurance, life insurance, disability, those types of things. So we service a lot of the businesses uh, in the Southeast Michigan, uh, especially in the greater uh, Detroit area. Um, we work in uh, Lake Orion, we work in Oxford and Independence Township and Plymouth Township and all the surrounding communities. And we provide those providers with the basics for giving their employees benefits, uh, which is a wonderful thing that we do in the sense that we're able to help those employees get the most from their benefit packages. Yeah, at Corporate Benefit Solutions, we work with companies of all size. So we work with companies as small as two employees all the way up to thousands of employees. So we don't have a, a limit to how how small or how big that employer can be. Uh, we simply look to find those niches that are right for us and so we go in and help those employers uh, pay, uh, first and foremost save money, but secondly help their employees get the most out of their benefits. Prevention is so, so key and every plan in America today that's a, a qualified plan through the Affordable Care Act has preventive care at no cost. So it's so important that people understand that and they can go see their physician and get their immunizations, get their checkups, get their mammograms, um, get all their wellness for their children, all at no cost. And so when you do that, not only are you taking care of your body, but you're also helping to find those things which may be creeping up that you were unaware of. So it's very, very key to, uh, to keeping yourself healthy to go have your preventive care visits every year. Now when a when a company like yours is in a community, turning a profit is one thing, but is it also important to you to be part of that community, give back to that community? Absolutely. Again, we not only do that through talking and educating, talking to and educating the employees of our employer groups, um, that's such a key component to helping people use, understand, and appreciate their benefits, but also contributing to things like the, uh, the Fish Food Bank, which is really, really a wonderful organization that helps so many families get the help they need, especially now in troubling times like this. These times are just unprecedented. I mean, it's been 100 years since we've had something like this go on with a, with a pandemic. And so many families have been impacted and so many people have been either had their hours cut or had to go on unemployment. And the organizations that help the needy, that help um, feed people and help clothe people and even house people are so key. And it is so key that all of us this year uh, and from last year contribute to these organizations because a lot of the fundraisers that are normally done on a face-to-face -face basis are unable to be held. Um, I know we participate in a lot of other types of um, um, organizations that help um, with um, uh, the community housing network, some other types of um, organizations that are out there that help people get the help they need. But the, the fundraising drives that are, again are usually face to face or held in a facility have, were not held at all last year. And so those were all done either virtually or solicited through email and, and Facebook. So very, very important for people to stay engaged in that. If someone has any questions, wants to reach out to you, how do they go about doing that? Absolutely. You can reach us at corporatebenefitsolutions.net or you can email me directly at steve at corporatebenefitsolutions.net. Happy to help anyone uh, with any uh, type of situations they may be having through their business or individually as well. Part of the, the Meyer culture is that we continue to give back to the communities and customers that shop with us. Uh, we're in a fortunate spot where we can give back to our communities and 2020 was a tough year for our customers and a lot of organizations out there and part of our goal is to try to give back and help those customers out that shop with us in the communities that we have our stores in. Well, customers are, are important to us, you know, without our customers, Meyer would be nothing. Uh, we're all here because of our customers and, and we understand that and we see what our customers are going through with uh, the pandemic and our goal is to, to help them out. You know, they've been here for us for all these years and now it's our turn to, to be there for them. How has the pandemic affected Meyer? Uh, it's been a struggle. You know, our team members, uh, the leadership, uh, our customers, uh, we've had a lot of changes over the last uh, 10 months. Uh, sometimes we change things by the hour, sometimes by the day, by the week. Uh, we've had, you know, numerous items that were hard to come by. We went through that, that time frame where you couldn't find toilet paper, you couldn't find ramen noodles, water, uh, some of those items. And we know our, our customers rely on us to 
get those items into their household. So uh, it was difficult because at times uh, it was almost like uh, Christmas, Christmas week, every week for eight straight months. And uh, our team members really worked hard to try to keep the shelves full and uh, take care of our customers the best that we can. Uh, it's, it's been busy, it's been hectic, and we've had to uh, adapt to the change and uh, try to figure out what our customers need and do our best as a company to, to take care of those customers' needs. During this whole pandemic, uh, our number one priority during this whole thing was keep our safety uh, top priority for both our customers and for, for our team members. Uh, you know, there's been a lot uh, of concern. Uh, so Meyer actually has done a great job of putting uh, different uh, safety precautions in place. Uh, starting with our team members, uh, we start with health screens before our team members even punch in and uh, start their job. Uh, we've added uh, plexiglass throughout the store to keep the uh, registers uh, separating the, the cashiers as well as the team members. Uh, we've added uh, hand sanitizer stations uh, throughout the store uh, for our team members, for our customers, uh, social distancing stickers. Uh, we try our best to, to keep uh, everybody six feet apart. It can be challenging at times, but uh, we, we've implemented that uh, face mask. Uh, we've really tried to enforce face masks with both our, our team members and our customers, uh, again, to keep everybody safe. Uh, there's been a lot out there. Uh, you know, I could probably go on and on of uh, some different things, but safety, safety has been our top priority as a company. Uh, hopefully the end is near. You know, I know 2020, I'm sure everybody's excited for 2020 to end, uh, including ourselves. Uh, and we just want to stay positive. We know uh, if we stick together as a community, uh, we can get through this together. Uh, we want to, to be there for everybody. And if there's anything we can do to help out, uh, let us know. But uh, it's important to us to give back and stay positive. It's almost over and we're going to get through it. All right, back here in the studio, I want to thank all of our sponsors. Without their help, especially Meyer, that $900 donation went a long way. And Corporate Benefit Solutions, uh, a second year, I believe, here on the Food Drive. Uh, Meyer, a longtime supporter of uh, ONTV and Oxford Orion Fish. And we'd like to say thank you to Waste Management once again. Um, I do have a statement here. Hopefully, we have the graphic we can share with everybody at home with Waste Management. And I have a little statement they sent in because we didn't have time to get out there and do a uh, little video with them. So Waste Management is North America's leading provider of integrated environmental solutions. We partner with our customers and communities to manage and reduce waste from collection to disposal while recovering valuable resources and creating clean, renewable energy. We're on a quest uh, for environmental performance, a mission to maximize resource value while minimizing and even eliminating environmental impact so that both our economy and environment can thrive. They are located at 600 West Silver Bell Road in Lake Orion and 20, was it 245 East Walden Boule or Walton Boulevard in Pontiac, Michigan. For more, visit wm.com or call 8 six six seven nine seven nine zero one eight thank you waste management first time uh, jumping into the uh, food drive two-day sponsor and we thank them all right so we were we uh, left off with our top 10 list and the, the guys and the boys so we're now in the oa girls yep and the ladies you know hey there are some the ladies some love there are some very good teams in the Ooh, oa West Bloomfield, obviously i mean like you unbelievable got both davis sisters you got both hendrick sisters my owner Hooper. I know Darren McAllister very well. Really good. I mean, they team can put there. up points, man. Oh, they can put up points in bunches, especially the Davis sisters. Yeah. Um, I mean, like to me, if I said this, I said this a couple weeks ago. If there's one team in here that I, I can beat Heartland, it's West Bloomfield because their athleticism. I am very worried about their depth, though, but it is what it is. And uh, why not? We're talking West Bloomfield. Yep. There it is. Uh, there it is. There's I mean, like Sammy's top have, ten. Then you have Clarkston and Stony Creek, the two challengers mm -hmm. in the red. Um, Clarkston, Maddie Sikorsky, if you haven't seen this girl, Player. she is legit. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, she can shoot threes anywhere. She's a good dribble driver. Very solid player for, um, for um, new coach um, Eric Goodnow. I mean, like, 
really up, phenomenal player. Can put up 20-plus points any, 30. any night. Any, 30. T- any time, yeah. Yep. yeah. And then there's Stony Creek. I call this team Team Feinbaum for a reason because <laughs> Paul Feinbaum. You guys heard Paul yes. Feinbaum. Yes, SEC this extraordinaire, is, that guy. This is Stony Creek at basketball for you. Is what? Because <laughs> Paul Fe- I, t- I mean, like, Stony Creek <laughs> Help reminds understand. me of Paul Feinbaum. They remind me they got talented players. You got both LaPrairie sisters. You got Mia Carson. Emmy Dem- Demerhoff, <laughs> Emily Flynn. I mean, okay. they got they got depth. They got program strength. I mean, like, so they have like, it. There is storyline waiting to happen. So Paul Feinbaum, they have the talent, but do nothing with it. No, they have a oh. ton of talent and do something with oh, it. Oh, okay. I mean, like, Kelly. So James you're a fan Bell. of Feinbaum? Yes, I am oh, a fan of Feinbaum. Oh, Sammy, get off his. <laughs> and I'm a fan of Mike Valenti too. So, but. Take that flight back to Michigan. Uh-huh. Well, we know why you're a Valenti fan. Yes. And then we look at <laughs> obviously in the rest of the red. Obviously Troy. Um, Groves has been a team um, been up and down. I mean, like Caitlin Sanders yeah. there. Troy, obviously, with um, Kendall Zider there. I mean, like Groves, we We've talked We've been talking about. her name forever. Oh, yeah. For, she played for, she's played varsity. But Troy's problem is postseason. They're going to have to deal with Warren Cousineau in there. They got yeah. Troy Athens in there. I mean, they're going to have some issues there. Um, Groves, obviously, we know the transition. Um, Allison Heidi's done a really nice job in her first year there. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you got Royal Oaks been struggling. a and is a very young team, though, in that red division. a and we got so used to seeing mm. power scoring well, and punch. Well, they changed punch. coaches. I mean, and like Michelle everything Ma- Coach flipped. Michelle Marshall retired. Yep. And then she created Coltrane. She's got a very Gra- young group. Graduates. Yeah, yep. and whoop, the whole thing flipped. Watch for Christian Banks. I mean, like, she's going to be a very good freshman player to watch. Um, I'll watch Jalen Austin as well. Um, a has got pieces, but... Yeah. Haven't managed to put it together. Royal Oaks, very young this year. Um, mm-hmm. And then that's my take on the red. Um, the blue, obviously, you got farm. You got It's a two-team race between Seaholm, Harper Woods. Harper Woods, if you eat chips, that is Harper Woods. It's not a conference schedule. <laughs> um, Soft. It's not, yes. I mean, like, and Seaholm's played a more vicious non-conference. Yeah. Um, and Seaholm knocked off Harper Woods mm. um, in overtime after – Coming back from 18 mm-hmm. down to beat Harper Woods. Wow. Now, Harper Woods has been struggling the last few weeks. I mean, had a lot more close ball games. They beat Farmington twice. I mean, I really like Farmington's team. Um, led, of course, by Anna Barrett um, yeah. for Coach Laura Guzman. Um, Ferndale Pontiac, you know, didn't have teams last year. They're both struggling right now. I know Pontiac, a um, little more better equipped than Coach Royal Marshall than Ferndale's in Alcatala. Ferndale University has been playing good basketball. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, lately, so is Avondale. Reagan Lawrence back really helps them out. So when I look at the blue, it's going to come down to Seaholm and Harper Woods. Uh, they're the two best teams. Okay. Farmington's out of the race right now. Um, you know, Avondale, Ferndale, U. They got a lot of play- games to make up, though, obviously. Then you have Oak Park. Oak Park's. Oak Park can't score. I mean, that's no, really, no, we I saw mean, some. We look wow. The, when you look at the scores, they, they just can't score. I yeah, mean, looking at some of those results mm-hmm. that you have me read, it's been scary. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, mm. I mean, like they're getting better, but they're a young team, though. But yeah, they, but they're not going to win. Right. No. And mm. then, last but not least, the OA White. This is yeah. where, of course, you know, you look at Lake Orion, Oxford. They're both in this division. Um. But right now, the team that I feel like in front right now is Rochester. Because Rochester, they got that win against Lake Orion. That's huge. Yeah. Um, At Lake Orion, of course, now, Lake Orion didn't have Kylie Heck in that game. But Rochester's got two twin towers to watch for in them. Freshman Kylie Robinson and Alice Mack. I mean, they're two six-footers. They're two six-footers. I mean, like. You don't see that. No, you do not. And that says a lot there. Um. Now, Lake Orion, they got a really nice team themselves. You, got, you look at Maddie Ebert, you look at Kylie Heck, you look at Livia Pavlovsky, mm-hmm. Audrey Wishmeyer, Taylor mm-hmm. Dinda. I mean, like, they're loaded. I and mean, Joey, you, know. you go to the game. I mean, mm-hmm. you help yeah. produce the game mm-hmm. so that we Lake are Orion's on the station. Mm-hmm. So you see these guys in person. Yeah. What, what and are you thinking? I think they're the real deal. Um, I say it a lot. I think their defense, the way that they play for Coach Bob Bridges, is incredible. To see, like, a team get behind a coach's coaching style so well because you don't see defensive yes. games nowadays no. and it's not that they can't score either they can score in bunches and they're they're pretty uh streaky shooting but their defense is so solid and that gets them in their so many games will carry them in games right. obviously i mean that's going to be the key for lake mm-hmm. going forward is can their defense carry them in games that's right. the key for them going forward yeah um 
Now, talk NPR, obviously, this, I mean, like, so we're let's, talk let's that define later on. if anybody's out there watching going, what is he talking about? What is what is this? NPR is basically like a playoff formula, basically, with the two, with the top two seeds get the bye. It's the way they rank the teams, rank the teams based on strength of schedule. Like, and what things. I don't like is what the image does is, is the rest of the teams, they don't see them, they put them by alphabetical order. It's the most ridiculous. <laughs> yes, it is. It's awful. obscene thing. It's awful. It's horrible. It's horrible. And we've we, and we've seen this yeah. uh, uh, mm -hmm. where we have teams who go, hey, I played really well. Oh, sorry, um, you didn't win. Let's say you didn't win your division, so we're going to knock you down. You didn't get the or top you seed. The, you, didn't the the you didn't get the number one seed. You got a couple uh, or you points didn't get the down. Two seed either. <laughs> and you get. And you have to play on that Monday. Yes, and you yeah. have to play right away. Yes, and you're toast because you're. Al letter. The, the alphabetical letter of letter, your yes. school. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. So, Give like, me a break. Mm -hmm. It's funny, but back to the white here. Ugh, um, sorry, I'm going to get Obviously, <laughs> the third place team in the white is yeah. really interesting. Because you got Oxford there. Mm. You got North Farmington there. I mean, those are the two teams. And then you got Adams there. You got Athens. I mean, Troy Athens. Yeah. You got Berkeley. Berkeley's actually having a nice season, actually. Led, of course, by the... Ashley Loon, I mean, for oh, Coach yeah. Cody Feltner. Been calling her name forever, too. Oh, yeah. She's a, um, she's very, she's not a bad player. I mean, like. Cody um, Feltner, a uh, Brandon alumni. Oh, yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, I played with him. Really? Yeah. Really? Did not know that. He used to coach at Ferndale, too. He's got, a, he's got a good, he's uh, got a good coaching but line. But if it comes down, <laughs> I think right now, the third best team in that division is Oxford. And the reason why mm. I say this is they got some playmakers. I mean, yes, Peyton Richter's out for the year. Um, coach Rachel Blair. I mean, like, it, Coach Richard Barr's got a really nice team. I like Allison Hofstetter a lot, yep. only a freshman. Um, Nevada Wood's another good player for them. Um, but everything starts for them is Miranda Winnebko. I mean, like, we know Winnebko can shoot the three ball. Mm -hmm. She is a very talented player. Yep. I mean, Rachel Barr's got a really nice piece with her. I right. mean, like, she's only a junior, too. Mm -hmm. They don't ha – I think they have about two seniors on that roster over there. I was going to say. Wow. So, and that team is built for the future. Yeah. I mean, you look at that program over there at Oxford. I mean, program strength is very important. Well, we talked about it during the break, too. Mm -hmm. Both Oxford and Lake Orion have a program lot strength. of depth, and their program is looking really good Both right now. Both those teams are looking really, really good right now. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously. And then you look at – Berkeley, we talked Loon, obviously. They're, I think they're my fourth best team right now. Um, and then North Farmington, you got Sella Leffler, Penelope Crary, um, both those girls for Coach Jeff Simpson. Um, Leffler especially is really talented. Um, did not play in the Lake Orion game, mm. but she's been really, really good lately. She had 19 against Bloopia Hills. Um, and then Adams, you know, they've been struggling a little bit under Coach Joe Malberg. Mm -hmm. uh, but you got they got two very good players in them. Um, Mass and Kessman and um, Abby Dranick. Um, Joe Malberg's done a really nice job in his first year there coaching that team. Troy Athens has been probably my most disappointing team. Okay. Experience, they got a lot of. You know, you look at Ellie Musco, you look at Jillian Siak, Rebecca Delilah. I mean, like, just really disappointed with the Red Hawks this season. And then you got Blue Bay Hills there, obviously. Um, very young group. I mean, they're mostly, mostly play freshmen and sophomores. I mean, like Lake Orion and Oxford, they're they're built for the future. Yeah. I mean, Ashley Fortner's not a bad player. Uh, they got a very good big in the post. I mean, like Coach Kristen Massey's team, I mean, really, really solid. Um, so when you look at my top ten, obviously, right now, when I look at the postseason, um, West Bloomfield is in that Kiss of Death district. You have they Birmingham are, Marion in there. But mm -hmm. do you think they the have what? Birmingham Marion's in there. You got uh, Mary Cicerone. <laughs> that's their final year there at Birmingham Marion. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. And that's going to be but just But don't you nuts. think the way they're playing, if there's anybody in the way, they have a chance? Yes, West Movie. Yeah, I think West Movie's got the best chance. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've got to get that depth figured out besides yeah. those starting five. It was, see, and that's, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you look at that district at Lake Orion. Of course, you got Lake Orion, Stony Creek, and Rochester. Those are the three teams that really stand out. Um, the district at Waterford Kettering, uh, yeah. <laughs> as, as anybody, there's nobody such Clarkson. Yeah. Sorry, nobody such Clarkson. No offense to Waterford Kettering, they're just not touch Clarkson. No. Um, and then you look at, um, Harper Woods, I mean, like, Harper Woods' district's very interesting, because they got St. Clair Shore South Lake in there. Mm -hmm. That'll be very interesting That's there. odd. Um, no one's touching Troy Country Day in the, in the um, <laughs> with Ferndale, yeah, Ferndale no. U, nobody's touching them. Yeah. Um, 
the Troy district's very interesting because you got Troy, Athens, Troy, Warren Woods Tower, Warren Mott, and Warren Cousineau. Whoa. You know? Warren Cousineau's the favorite in that district because of who they have back, you know. And their five losses were the teams 600 or above on the NPR. Oh. And Troy and Troy Athens even match with okay. one another. Um, and let's not forget Troy Athens beat Troy by two points mm -hmm. in December. So, and then, of course, you look at, um, we talked the West Bloomfield district, that's loaded. Yeah. Um, Oak Park, you know, the Ber the district it, of Oak Park, Detroit Renaissance, it, Berkeley, it, it, no one's touching Renaissance. Yeah, no. no. Well, we see the regular season, and it's, mm -hmm. no we, one's no, touching we know what's happening. Yeah. No one's touching Shady Law and Detroit Renaissance. Yeah. I mean, like, so, former Oakland University standout, by the way. Um, Berkeley's got an outside shot, but I just don't know if they can knock off Renaissance. Okay. So, those are my early thoughts with the, di oh, and I forgot Oxford. Um, Oxford. At Davison, you got Graham Blank in there, oh, you got Davison. I mean, you know, that's going to be a tough task. But Oxford uh, could get the second seed. They could get the second seed in there. That, that in would that, be good. That would be good for Coach Richard So Byer second seed, does that give him a bye? Yes, that gives him a bye. I mean, like, that gives him a bye. And I think that would help Oxford mm -hmm. if they get the number two seed. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they could beat Grant. I think they got a shot at Graham Blank. I mean, like, I think they got a shot at him. I mean. You calling it? No. <laughs> <laughs> A man I mean, of conviction <laughs> over here. Now, I just think Graham went too much for Oxford. I sorry, know. Sorry, Wildcats. But, you, but we've seen crazier things. Right. Sure. I was going to say. But if, right. there's a, but if there's a team that's more inclined to pull off an upset, it's Oxford. Yeah. Because mm. I think Graham Blank's got a history of choking, especially in the postseason. They got a history of it. All right. We're at 131 mm -hmm. or so. Um, live here in the studio. It's sports day. We're talking sports, as you can see. It's the Owen TV Food Drive, the 12th annual Owen TV Food Drive for Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. Um, our collection goal is $55,000, but we mm -hmm. have surpassed that collection goal due to generous uh, mm -hmm. support from our sponsors. And if you'd like to donate, you can do it in multiple ways. You can head on over to our website at orionontv.org and donate there via GoFundMe. That account will be up uh, until Friday uh, at close of business. And then uh, you can donate in person. Head on over to the studio. Say hi to us, the crew here, uh, our volunteer crew. We got uh, great camera operators uh, uh, here today working with us, our volunteers. And you can say hi and say hi to the staff. Drop off your stuff. You can even drop off a cash, do cash donation if you like. We're trying to fill our van up with... Uh, uh, physical donations again this year. Uh, we're at 1349 Joslin Road in the big blue building at the Oregon Center. Okay, so back to sports. Um, <laughs> so we're talking high school. There's a lot going on. Seasons are winding down. We're going mm -hmm. to kind of transition because there's a lot of other sports going on. Now, Sammy, you and I talk high school a ton yep. every Monday. You OA know, now. OA now we're there <laughs> and by the way, OA now, I want to share with you, and I, Joey knows this, and the staff does too, number one listen to podcast on uh, ON TV's platform. Yeah. You are number one. <laughs> so you got about 30 people a week tuning in, and we know they're coaches. We know they're mm -hmm. players. We I got a lot parents. of enemies on this show. He does. <laughs> I got a lot of enemies. You do. Yeah, yep. you call out a lot of people, and they let you hear about it, which mm -hmm. is it, it's which is a lot of fun, and Just it's wait all till you look at football. it's all good natured, right? Just wait till you watch football. You know, yeah, Controver football controversy gets clicks. Sure, controversy <laughs> gets clicks, and then um, he says some stuff, man. I mean, yeah. you're 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 getting up there in age. There, happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. his birthday, mm -hmm. young man. Thank you. And uh, so uh, the 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 uh, I'd say the the energy level has come down with has which, it? with his. Uh, <laughs> yes, if you saw BT back in the early days, it's true. we had to have an oxygen tank for him true. and a stretcher to get him out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, topic. so we talk controversy, we talk uh, different topics. Um, today, uh, well, let's transition into some college. You, mm. do co you guys yeah. want to do college? Um, and uh, Joey, do you, have a, do you have a topic that you want to dig in? Well, because Sammy's here, I think we have to talk about Michigan State. And I will chime in for Michigan side because, you know, Malik... My partner. Yeah, we're missing is, Malik. He's, he's a big Michigan fan. Are we um, going college football first or college basketball? Oh, I'll let you choose. Because college basketball, you know Michigan's it's NIT team. And we know Maybe. Michigan State's going to be <laughs> in, in, the, in the big dance. But how far can Ooh. they go in the big dance? Because they just lost yes, big time to Rutgers. To Rutgers. In the most obscene way. And now I'm not saying that it's a bad thing because the Big Ten is very competitive and the Big Ten is a tough division. 
But when you're a top 10 team, you can't be losing to Rutgers. No. And now they have to go play Wisconsin tonight. I think they'll beat Wisconsin. Uh, of course you do. I'm nervous about this team. So I brought it up earlier about in high school how you have two-headed monsters and you need that third option. Michigan State, I think they only have one option. And that's a problem. Are you saying Marcus Bingham? <laughs> no. No. Christy. By oh, no ch- No, Gabe Brown. Gabe well, Brown. Gabe Brown is the only option they have Rex right Christy's now. Rex fine. And that's a problem. Rex Christie's fine. How did, like, so he, how did Christie do in that Rutgers game? He didn't play well. He didn't no, play well. No, and he, he did the same thing against Illinois. Yes. He came up with a bagel. I well, mean, did nothing. Hangover, and so, I mean? and and the other problem that He's I have. He's not a freshman anymore, Sam. You know that. Yeah, You're halfway yeah. through the Big Ten season. The other problem no that way. I have is there is so much talent on this team. I'm, I'm a state fan, but I like to stir the pot. And so when I'm so in-depth on basketball, I have to talk about it. Marcus Bingham is a 17-year player for this team. And just this year, he's gotten his second career double-double yeah. as a seven-footer. Seven-footer, yeah. That is a problem. There has been no – we have Gabe Brown, Malik Hall, Julius Marble, Marcus Bingham, all these very talented players have not no, shown anything. they have not developed – I'm – I'll shake his hand. He's, he's true. I'm a state fan as well. And if you watch it, the junior class, or are they a senior class now with yes, Marble? Yes, most of them. They did nothing. Yes. And when uh, they came into as state, a class, you were so, so excited oh, yeah. about the potential for this team. Yeah. Sammy. And I just don't know. He's not going to say no. I don't know where right. to go. <laughs> I think this team's going to be okay. Let's not forget, you know, when Michigan State has had these struggles before, I mean, they found a way to turn around late. You know, let's not forget, Michigan State a couple years ago was a seven seed in the NCAA tournament. Yes. Mm-hmm. Got to the Final Four. Different. They def, de, Completely <laughs> different type of team. If you really go back, you're talking when they beat Duke. When they beat, yeah, when they got. They when got they, to the Final Four after going to Duke, Zion. number one, which was. No, no, that's 19. No, no, I'm talking about it was the year they were the seven seed, knocked off Virginia. Knocked off Louisville yes. to get to the final okay. four. Okay. Still, that's the same group, right? Right, Roughly. They played defense in a different way. Mm-hmm. And that, that whole squad was a different defensive makeup. Mm-hmm. They ne- uh, This one, I'm watching going, you're getting up, rebounded on the boards, especially in the that's offensive not, side? Yeah. That's not a Tom Izzo team. I get it's, that. It's insane. And turnovers. And the, and the turning turnovers. Turnovers has always been a problem. Yes. But... Which is weird Which to say I don't for, it, you know, when people talk uh, about Coach Izzo and then strict guy. almost all of his teams have turnover Horrible. problems. Mm-hmm. Is, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say there, but. They had turnover problems even going back to the championship season. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. a. Tell when they had caches? No, when, in 2000. I mean, oh, we're yes, going yes. 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. They, they've always had turnover issues. Sure. But they just got the scoring. It's just. I just I I see them. They're play, not as good. Play. I think it comes down to the guard play. I yes. mean, it no, does. I agree. Michigan State. Who wants to be the leader? Who wants on that to be floor? a leader in the in the guard? It comes out of point guard play because obviously you know you've had Mateen Cleaves, you've had Cassius Winston, you've had Kalen Lucas. Kalen Lucas. Well, we're going back. I mean, they just don't have a true point guard on this team. Mm-hmm. They don't have one. No. And well, then yeah. you look at last year. Uh, the big thing, like last year, they had a lot of question marks going into the tournament last year as well. Mm-hmm. Aaron Henry stepped up huge in the tournament, and he mm-hmm. kind of was that leader. Ooh. They don't have that as leader. As good as I think Gabe Brown can be, I don't know if he has that in him necessarily to turn it on. And if he doesn't have it, then they're going to need two other guys at least to step up and score for this team. It's the, not how They have so many. Hauser's been very disappointing. They just have so many inconsistencies on this team. And I agree with you. They are potentially a team that can make a Sweet 16 run, maybe Elite Eight. But I, I just don't know if they're going to be able to be consistent enough to They've do it. They've got a lot to work on. they got a lot to fix. It I is. mean, that's something that and, and I've noticed with this I, team. And I, we're pretty much, we all agree on this. But if you're looking at, let's say, the other side of the corn, uh, U of M, what is going on down there? They're an NIT team, bottom yeah, line. Because we, I mean, they, if they don't get it, uh, who's the big guy down low? Uh, he got um, Dickinson. Dickinson. Yes, Dickinson. Dickinson. So if he doesn't get the ball, just if you go back to analyze yes. the Michigan Michigan State game, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what did they do in the first half? Dumped it down low. The guy had yep. was on a roll, couldn't stop him. Mm-hmm. F- uh, foul making machine, rolling it in, layup, 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 free throws. 
and then he, they cycle him out to the three-point three line in the yeah. second half, seven-footer. What? Mm -hmm. And then and the other problem is I don't get that. Michigan has the exact same problems that Michigan State does. Yes, just on a different level. I'm Hunter trying Dickinson, to figure out Oakland's problems too. Hunter Dickinson <laughs> is the only guy that Michigan has at the moment that's consistent. Mm -hmm. And teams are yes. now allowing him. There, at let first, him get twenty. Let there him was get a, twenty. Let him get thirty. Sure everybody else does. Right. There was a lot of people that were double teaming him all the time mm -hmm. and letting him do whatever, yeah, opening get 20, up other sure guys. Else done. Yeah. And now they're just single covering him. They're letting him get his points and they're challenging anybody else to get him. Mm -hmm. They can't. Yeah. And, and me and Malik and I have been talking about this a lot. This is Jawan Howard's first true team. Yes. Because he was given a very talented team <laughs> yes, when he, he came was. in. Which look at, just look at like what Franz Wagner is doing in the NBA right yeah, now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jawan Howard is real, and, and he's got the number one recruiting, recruiting class. class. I was just going to say. Him, mm -hmm. him in Kentucky. Kentucky's known for getting a number one recruiting class and doing mm -hmm. nothing with it. Will Juwan Howard figure it out or not? I don't know. I mean, he's still got his growing pains, but that's right, a big concern yeah. for this team now is that he he now controls this team. Correct. Yeah, now it's his team. I mean, obviously. And this you know, is where coaching comes in. Yes. Mm -hmm. What kind of a coach is he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what kind of a coach is he? Right. You know, you look at longtime coaches, you know, you know, you look at Greg Campy, you know, at Oakland mm -hmm. being there a long time. I mean, like, I'm still trying to figure out what his problems at OU are. But yeah. they got a good team. I think they got a good shot at the Horizon League. They've got they some talent again, yeah. Yeah, they got some very good talent over mm -hmm. in Oakland. Um, but Michigan, I just see clearly, Michigan clears an NIT team. Yeah. I mean, with the way that they are. Um, and they have a big game against Penn State tonight as well. Mm -hmm. And if they lose that game, I'm, uh, I think they're, it's, I think it is NIT. I still yeah. think when you look at the Horizon League, Oakland's still the cream of the crop in that league, even though Cleveland State is going to be a team to watch for. Uh, yeah, Cleveland State has been a good team mm -hmm. the last few years. and that I think it's going to – I think I, it wouldn't surprise me if the Horizon League finals Oakland-Cleveland State. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, Oakland, you know, they got some good pieces on that team. Right. I mean, Detroit Mercy, obviously, Antoine Davis. Um, yeah. But – on Michigan, they're yeah. definitely an IT team. I think yeah. I think Oakland can be an NCAA tournament team. You think do. so? I think they got a shot. I well, mean, well, they have to take they the gotta lead. Fix they got to win that tournament. Too straight. They got yeah, See, gotta that's win the frustrating tournament. with some of those uh, mid majors, right? Yes. Because mm -hmm. you have to win your tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the frustrating and part of it. You know, if you don't, if you yeah. don't, you're done. I mean, yeah. like now, if you're like a number one seed in your tournament, your conference tournament, and don't win it, then you can go to the NIT. Yeah. So. You know, so it's very important to get the number one seed if you're a mid-major. You know, yeah. I think Oakland's got a great chance here to um, get to the get to the NCAA tournament for the first time since since Anthony Termina was there back in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> was you know? that long ago? Yeah, wow. Anthony was a manager of that team. That's at Oakland, crazy. You know, he's so, got two Summit League rings in front of me. So to sum it up, we've got MSU better get their act together, mm -hmm. um, or they're one and done. Mm. Are we say they're getting in? Obviously, they're gonna get in. Say? Obviously, yeah. um, uh, but they gotta get their act together, or they're, they're gonna be a one and done team like yeah. last year. Yeah. Michigan, um, NIT, NIT lock. all day. NIT lock. <laughs> they need a they need a good win streak. Now, the the benefit of being in the Big Ten is a very tough schedule. But if you can get some big wins, mm -hmm. you that can, can help your, your resume. You can change your yeah. season around pretty quickly. But I yeah, I don't then, I don't know what they're gonna do. Then OU basically win the Horizon. They have to win it. Mm -hmm. They have to win it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do we want to quickly talk about uh, the football seasons and then oh, sure, we can. do Super Bowl talk to finish sure. it up? Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, do you want to do like uh, work because uh, what recruiting just finished, right? Yes. So, yeah. For uh, college football. Michigan State's got the fifth best recruiting class in the nation right now. Hmm. Michigan. Michigan State. What? Since Mich when? They just we got, got some a late signings. Yeah. They oh, more signings, yeah. I missed that. They just got a quarterback who signed. I thought uh, Ohio State and Penn State had the top uh, uh, recruiting classes in the Big Ten. Mm, I, I think it's Did that I, flip -flop? I, read, I read earlier today with Michigan State. You know, it's okay. Well, we're gonna Michigan, have you just don't understand. Checkers. This is what we needed Malik for. Fact Malik, checkers. Malik, Malik he's a, yeah. he is a big recruiting Michigan, class guy. Michigan. You know, that is a Chinese soap opera, what they're doing with Jim Harbaugh. I mean, like... Chinese soap it opera. It is. It's a soap opera over there. Well, I, I get soap opera. They're looking, Chinese for, they're looking for coordinators. Well, uh, well yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. So, they lost uh, D.C. McDonald's. and O.C. Yep. Yeah. And then Josh Gass went to Miami. So, if yeah. you're Jim Harbaugh, I think this team's in trouble. I think Michigan could be in some trouble. I, they got to well, replace Aiden Hutchinson. They got to replace... Um, David Ojabo, they got to replace some key players there, especially offensive the line is still there. Still yes. got a running game. Yeah, yeah and you but, got you got two quarterbacks, so they got two quarterbacks. But 
What do we say, Sammy? Mm -hmm. You have two quarterbacks. You have no quarterback, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Because uh, we we saw it at the state game. The, yeah. the, the fraudulent win by the green and white that never happened according to national media and the local fans <sighs> because they went to the playoffs. But you have, uh, you know, MSU, what did we see? Them rotating the quarterback out ultimately cost them that game, yeah. regardless mm -hmm. if you want controversy on mm -hmm. the fumble pick, uh, you know. Uh, but they're going to say we beat Ohio State. You know, they're going to say that. We beat Ohio but State. But they did. They, they did. did. But you yeah. have to look at how did they lose when yeah. you're rotating. How did they lose when you rotate quarterback? Games game? you should have won, right? right? They were the favorite. Mm -hmm. They should have beat, uh, beat us, but they didn't. Yep. And I, we go back to when they were rotating and who's the baseball player for the Yankees? Uh, uh, Drew, Drew Henson. Henson. They lost to state that you're rotating in. Yeah, Tom out, Brady. Right? Mm -hmm. If they would have kept Brady in, yep. they would have won that game hands down. Yep. But it's this can't make a decision. I don't and get it. And you don't want to make the recruit. And upset. a lot of it is because, you know, Michigan is a team that had to play from ahead in a lot of their games. Yes. If they played from behind, they had to go away from the run game. They had to go away from their mm -hmm. game plan. They start to lose control, and that's where they start making mistakes. Well, they blew a 16-point lead against Michigan State. Exactly. Yes. And then... And then they panic. Yeah, they panic, yes. And when they got when they lost to Georgia, they were no match for Georgia. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, we... Yes. We mm -hmm. knew that. Yeah, we knew uh, that. I, I, you know, but they did get there. They did cap it off. Mm -hmm. um, they did finally it, beat Ohio State. They did, and it, fe it, it felt like when the state went to uh, the that Bowl. year, when they went to uh, the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You're watching the team, you're going, the team that went to the Rose Bowl is better than this team now. They are mm -hmm. just happen to win these games and make it to, you know, to the big game. Yeah. They made it to the playoffs because of rankings right. and took Iowa to a last-second 11-minute drive in the fourth <laughs> quarter to close out the game. They put 42 on there. I know. On Iowa. They put 42 on Iowa. Going to the playoffs? The year when they played the playoffs? wasn't. Oh, no, no, no. That was Michigan's... like a nine-minute drive to. <laughs> oh, Michigan State beat Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, I, I, I don't I, know I much, but I do know that. Yeah, I remember <laughs> but, that But one. it's a similar thing. It's parallel. Yeah. And we all knew, hey, you got there. Great. Okay, cool. You're going to get your behind handed to mm -hmm. you just like everybody else because you're not mm -hmm. ready. We're not yeah. built like those teams. Yep. And that's how Michigan State this year. Michigan is, State's gonna. There's, uh, they're a similar way of Michigan <laughs> in both. It's funny in both basketball and football. Michigan, Michigan and Michigan State, State uses are so the similar. Transfer portal to perfection. You know that's this what they one year. This year, this year they, they, they did. They Kenneth Walker. Now you look at the transfer portal. They got two running backs now. Transfer from Colorado. Uh, and um, Versard, and they got um, Jalen Berger, a transfer yes. from Wisconsin. And a good recruit coming in. Yeah. But Walker, we. Yes. He's a generational runner. Mm -hmm. He made them look good. He right. manufactured yards. He manufactured points that would never have come. When he was injured in those couple of those games, right, at the end of the yeah. season when they're trying to make sure he does, his ankle, he twisted his ankle, right, what happened? Stagnated running offense. Mm -hmm. They go back to everybody else. Yes, we got the guys coming to their experience that are transfers, but – he got lucky and rode Walker to a $90 million he, contract. He hid the offensive line. And I'm a fan. Line. He, hid, he hid Michigan State's offensive line. Yes. Because they struggled at times. But when he played, he was able to make holes for himself. He was able to break tackles. And, and that opened up their the offense. passing game. And exactly. then made Thorne look like Thorne a genius. Thorne looks really good. Jalen Reed's a very good poor player. Yes. Losing to me and Nader is going to hurt this team. Um, but they did but get. They were thought they were going to lose Reed. I think it was a bad decision for business. But I, you know, he, uh, me too. I get shocked. To, I think stayed. it was a good decision because he had a. I it's mean, good. Naylor was injured. I think it was yeah. a good decision. It's. I mean, it's good for to Michigan come back State. For Reed? But yeah. really, good decision. I, I think mean, his draft stock was know. very. Good. Oh, it, it wasn't going to be me, higher. The thing that scares me with Michigan State next year is their secondary. That's going to scare me. Mm -hmm. They were the worst <laughs> in the nation last year. It was horrendous. And they still get eleven wins, huh? Yeah. What? I still think they're in 11 wins. Oh, Sam. Oh, boy. I mean, Mel Tucker you has sure proved. You sure didn't drink any of that? <laughs> Mel Tucker Pepsi? has proved that he can oh. he can make something out of nothing, it looks like. Yes. Yes. But, it, again, it's it's similar oh, to it's the Juwan Howard thing. It's still it's still early. One year. Way I, early. I, Joey, you're right on I don't want to yeah. jump the gun just yet. And I'm, I'm excited because I like when – I will say I'm a big fan of Michigan State football. I – don't like Michigan State basketball as much as I like Michigan. That's where Michigan, I kind of flip flop. Michigan's yeah. got a very but, soft non-conference, but Michigan State they got to play at Seattle against Washington. That'll be really interesting, you know, for a non-conference. Yeah, 
So yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I think MSU football next year is going to be 500 if they're lucky. I disagree. I'm willing to wait. Surprise me. I am willing to play. Prove me around. wrong. I'm willing to play. I, I, I like Tucker, what he's doing. The culture has changed. I mm -hmm. like it. Um, the kids are enthused. You can't deny the recruiting. Right. Mm -hmm. But we. how many times have we seen this in recruiting? Look at Michigan's recruiting class. Mm -hmm. Number one in the Big Ten. Top five, top five, top five. Yeah, they don't know how to develop And talent. what did they do with it? They don't have to develop talent. MSU, you know, traditionally before Tucker came in, before the downslide of D'Antonio, they were in the 20s, 25s, and developed them until they slid and got lazy mm -hmm. at the end and just didn't want to recruit anymore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but this is different. I, you got Tucker who's hungry. Mm -hmm. um, he wants to prove himself. Just got a big paycheck. Yeah, a big monster paycheck. paycheck. <laughs> but he also has a monster uh, revenue stream for his staff. This mm -hmm. is the largest staff that MSU's ever had. Mm -hmm. And they're now on par with Ohio State and Michigan Penn and Penn State and those guys about getting a payroll for having those special assistants and all these other things going on. And you can't deny the strength and conditioning mm -hmm. uh, coach they got running over there. Did MSU ever falter and look tired at the end of any game? No. N no, never. And uh, that's how they started winning some games. Mm -hmm. The other team, they could wear them down slightly, get mm -hmm. a W. Yeah. But I still think, I think last year was a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. It got the fan base back energized, right, Joey? Yeah. Got them back on. Yeah, this is interesting. This He's is. got to get rid of the white helmets. But oh, I think, get out of here. I think, I I think the em. problem the I last year. Sammy. The, the, last, <laughs> the thing last year is you couldn't believe. It was happening. Anything. Because I know. You're like, I can't understand how good this team is or how <laughs> good it's not. And that's how I feel in their basketball right now. It's like, I, I, don't, yeah, I, no. I don't have a good read have on no what faith. Michigan State is. Yeah. It's it's a good it's a fun ride, but I'm not I'm not sure. And uh, we're at about ten minutes too, so we got about six uh, seven minutes left in this um, uh, segment before we roll out of here at two. Um, let's talk Harbaugh and Michigan, and we we just kind of glanced over it a little bit. Uh, he lost an OC, <laughs> OC in DC. Now people are going, oh the OC's gone. He's he's going to Miami in a lateral move. What's going on over there? I think that is, it doesn't really matter in the OC because what they do, vanilla, vanilla, run the ball up the middle most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's the defensive coordinator losing him. I think that's the key loss. If yeah. they go with that, if they go with that, I know a perfect guy who could be the defensive coordinator. You? Yeah. No. <laughs> you Ron almost said Bellamy. yes. Ron Bellamy, former coach at West Bloomfield. Yeah. Championship experience. He knows how to win. I think he'd be he'd College great coordinator defense. experience. Even though he was a receiver at Michigan. You know what I mean? He yeah. played wide receiver at Michigan. He's a wide receiver and you put him as DC? <laughs> I could put him at OC if you want. Go ahead. Uh, you you do it. Rob Bellamy for <laughs> offensive coordinator. That would be really Oh, OC. I thought you said DC. I'm yeah. looking at the DC side of, you know, the defense. Mm -hmm. Because they had a decent defense, right? The guy came in and did something right. Mm -hmm. Put him in the right positions. He made, was it uh, Ojabo? Is that his, uh, the yeah. other guy on the other Maybe side? Ojabo, Never yeah. heard of the guy. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's potentially a first-round draft pick, which yep. I don't know if he's. They good. run into the same problem of uh, having a struggling on the secondary, like Michigan State. Yes, does. That, and they have, they have for a while. They have for a while. Yeah, Vincent Gray was not very good. No, but their linebackers and line has been. Sorry, solid. Rochester Adams. Offensive <laughs> line was pretty good. They get they their offensive line won the best line in the nation last year. Yeah, but got, then how they do against Georgia? Got dis well, that was how the, they do against Georgia. It is like a generational defense, though, mm -hmm. for Georgia. So. Yeah. I can't blame them too much. Mm -hmm. well, how big is that end? Six, eight, yeah. 500 pounds? But, okay, so for Harbaugh, he came back. I'm flirting this with the NFL. He's coming back. Yeah. I'm committing. I have, I'm committing more than anybody's damage ever committed to anything in my life. Damage is recruiting. Mm -hmm. You can see it with these kids. Yeah, they don't have the patience anymore. No, yeah. not anymore. And that's why I'm saying, if... Jim Harbaugh keeps flirting with the NFL. Who's going to want to go to Michigan? Listen, I don't think he's flirting anymore. I think this is it. Yeah. This was it. He he got him to the playoffs. They had a great year. Uh, turned around what was a disaster for a lot of teams. I mean, yeah. you have to admit. I mean, it was they had COVID problems. If you believe the, <laughs> if you believe the media reports, but yeah, I mean, they ran into problems. It was, you know, one off. Just like MSU, it looked like it was a one off. Like some other teams ran into that. Mm -hmm. But coming, you know, turning it around like he did, got him to the playoffs. His stock was high, and if he was going to go, this is it. Mm -hmm. and, and no one else is going to want. I don't think anybody's going to want him. 
Yeah. This is it. He's here. And the only thing they're missing is the contract for life, mm -hmm. right? But it's just, yeah, I, I'm i happy he stayed. 0-2 against Mel Tucker. 0-2. See, that's crazy. 0-2 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. against Mel Tucker. Yeah. All right, I think we... we Oh, we got the stadium behind us. Yes, we do. We have yeah, to at it, least. It's, it's uh, five or six two, so we got to get our. We uh, at least have to make our Super Bowl predictions. <laughs> so, if I stadium, it's it's nice here in uh, Inglewood, California, right now. About seventy five degrees, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm like, wearing a long sleeve, don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Well, no, there's a breeze. See, it's <laughs> rippling on the lake behind us. All right, what do you Sam, think about the Super got? Bowl? Who they win the Super Bowl? I want. I'm sorry. Oh, you're not gonna pick? I said who they win the Super Bowl. So Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Really? So yeah. you don't want? Do you want Stafford to lose? Is that is that the the idea here? <laughs> it's at home for LA. It's at home, and, and yeah, we had a team win the Super Bowl last year on the home field, which was Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. Do you um, think that would happen again, though? Because I always call it the corporate game because most of the people there aren't the fans. Right. No, but I just think that's why we're in the parking lot because we can't pay for this. I we think you knock off. <laughs> we couldn't even pay to, pay to park the car because it's three hundred fifty dollars to you park a car. Kansas City. You know what? You deserve to win the Super Bowl. In Cincinnati, you got a great future. Josh Burrow. Um, you got um, the Jamar Watt, Chase. Jamar Chase. You got T. Higgins. T. Run the ball. Mixon. Yep. They got a solid defense now. Joe Mixon to run the ball. You got solid defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think? The, I mean, we've seen Orange deer in the headlights Black. though. Teams that came out of nowhere, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the upstarts going against people who've been there. Mm -hmm. Rams haven't. Rams have been there. Right. Stafford's never been there. Well, Stafford's he had. Well, <laughs> see, and that's that's the thing where you can't pick a clear favorite yes. because what has Stafford done traditionally? <laughs> and he's yeah, played, but he played with the Lions, though. He, right? Uh, he, yes. he chucks it in the end zone to triple cover it, and you know he's going to do it. Yes. Yeah, my, my son and I Lions. were betting on how many interceptions he's going to throw that yeah, last game in the, the Lions. championship game. I mean, and like, and I'm sure our director, Joe Johnson, is <laughs> rolling right now because he's a big Stafford supporter, but, you know. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Cincinnati wins this one. Okay. I would say Ooh. 31 to 24. Okay. In LA. And sure. Joe and Joe will be wearing a Bengals. Um, I can just imagine <laughs> Joe Johnson wearing sunglasses and singing, "Who they? Who they? Who they <laughs> think's gonna beat them Bengals?" Two minutes. <laughs> All right, we got two minutes. Uh, Joey, your pick. Um. Man, it's tough because the storylines are both good. Um, a young team that has a lot of just fire in them in Cincinnati, and then the Rams, I kind know. of a powerhouse. <laughs> Stafford getting over his demons, I guess. A lot of contract. But at the same time, if Stafford loses, he's no better than Jared Goff, I guess. I know. Technically, technically. He looks better. His stats are way better. <laughs> I can't deny that. So what do you got? I, I'm going to go. You, it sounds like you're making up your mind as yes, we are on this stage. I am, and I've been <laughs> trying to figure it out the whole time. But I think I want to go with Cincinnati. I think – I like their story a little bit better. Maybe so it's I. biased. I don't want to see Stafford to win the Super Bowl. I like that he's gotten over his, his playoff hump, but Cincinnati. I want Cincinnati 27-21. All right, so same thing. I love the Cincinnati story. I love it. I think it's great. I just wish it was like the Lions or somebody, you know, but it's Cincinnati, so be it. Uh, but I think the Rams are going to win. Okay. Yeah. I think the Rams are going to win. Um, I think it's going to be close, like Sammy said. I mean, it, both quarterbacks can put up points. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, having home co confines, I think the, brights are bit, uh, the lights are a bit bright for that upstart Bengals team, yeah. and I think well, the Rams and, are going to And it. Cincinnati got sacked eight times by the Titans, or nine times. So the if Rams they, have a better defense. If, if, if they play. don't stop that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ugly for uh, yes. the Bengals. But, okay. So we're going to wrap this up here in the studio. I'm Ian Locke, Executive Director at Orient Neighborhood Television. Joey Tysick, uh, uh, Production Coordinator here at ONTV. And Sammy Taramina, uh, producer of OA and Al Podcast, plus a whole host of other things. We want to thank you all for tuning in to this Live 12 to 2 Tuesday on the second day of the food drive. Uh, don't forget, you can donate uh, to the food pantry at orientontv.org. Click on the GoFundMe link, get some uh, donations in. And uh, hopefully we can get a nice chunk of change over to the food pantry to help those in need. Um, again, our goal is $5,000, which we've eclipsed. We want to get that to six. And we want to thank all of our sponsors uh, for helping us out uh, to achieve that goal so far. Uh, is that it? We, any more countdown? Are we good to go? I think we have to say goodbye now. 
All right, we'll see you tomorrow from 12 to 2 here. Tomorrow it's music day. You're so, going to be playing. Oh, boy. Head, yeah, Live I'm going to be sing, sing Purple Rain for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's one of the selections, but I'm going to attempt to play the guitar uh, live in the community for the first time ever. Of course, it's going to be on TV. What? All right, so we're going to say see you later. Support Fish. Get those donations in. Uh, you can drop them off until 9 p.m. tonight and all week. So we'll see you later. Thanks for tuning in, and have a good day, everybody.